Welcome to the second season. It's playoff football. I'm Bill Tippo with Don Hensley. Thanks to Big Lou and Geary for joining us for the video stream and getting a chance to watch the Granville Band here. We'll have the national anthem coming up in a moment. It's playoff football, Don. We've made our way to Licking County, northeast of Columbus, Granville, a very, my description, bougie town, bougie school. Got the field turf, got a nice press row. And they've got a good football team. They're 8-2 and two last year, though. Granville went 13-1 and one and got all the way to the state semifinals. lafont has got a good football team, too. They're 8-2 and two in CBC co-champs. So here we are. Uh, we're booked in for a good one tonight. Yeah, I mean, I think that this is going to be a good game. I think the two teams are mirror images of each other. They both like to play in space. They're both led by, you know, really strong linebacking crews. And, uh, you know, I think it's going to be a great game. I, you know, uh, Bell Fountain, it looks like, will be without the services of uh, junior standout running back Chris Fogan. Um, but, you know, they played most of the London game with it. So I think that uh, as we talked to Jake Kennedy earlier this year, this week and, and, and the coaching staff, you know, they've had a week of, to prepare for that. And uh, it should be a good one. I think that both teams want to throw the football around the yard a little bit. And uh, it's going to be a fun game to watch. And really ideal weather for here in late October, right before Halloween. And, uh, you know, just a little bit of a breeze, maybe five miles an hour. Not super cold, no rain. Great night to throw the football. Yeah, it's uh, perfect conditions. And I tell you what, if you're a football, if you're playing in the game, this type of uh, temperature in the 40s, mid-40s is perfect. I think we're going to take a pause for the National Anthem as we listen and watch. Well, Fountain at Granville tonight in the playoffs. Actually, this is the fight song. We'll continue our pregame talk here down. The National Anthem is coming up in a moment. The Blue Aces have quite a band. Blue is the dominant color here at Granville. Their field turf is, you know, the green you would normally see, but there's lots of blue on the outer trim of the field. Blue end zones where it says Granville to our left, Blue Aces to our right, and white goalposts have great facilities here at Granville, a team that we really don't have any history with in any sports that I could think of. No, I don't remember playing them, but, um, you know, the, the key to for their team is is the Tchaikovsky brothers. You know, Matt Tchaikovsky is the leading rusher for Granville with 930 yards and six touchdowns. Uh, he ran 31 times in their last game against Watkins Memorial, and his brother, Mikey uh, uh, Tchaikovsky, was kind of a leading receiver and a really strong defensive player for him. He'd been out with a uh, elbow injury, but he's back. Yeah, and a very good quarterback for Granville as well as senior. He played some last year in the playoffs when last year's senior got hurt, had an ACL injury, so this young man really stepped up in the final three or four weeks of the season last year. Ernsberger, he's back. We've seen him in the pregame warm-up so he can throw the football. Yeah, he's, he's throwing for 2,036 yards so far this season, 20 touchdowns, seven interceptions. Uh, it should be a matchup of quarterbacks because uh, Belfont's TV and St. Clair enters the game uh, with 21,000 or 2,136 yards, 23 touchdowns, and four interceptions. And I think the thing about St. Clair that we, you know, we don't really talk too much about because you know we, we talk during the game about this throw and that, but he completed a whopping 72% of his passes this year, which is just an, an incredible efficiency uh, for a high school quarterback. Yeah, I don't know that I've ever, I've ever seen it before. Again, Bell Fountain at Granville tonight. It's week 11 of the Division Three Region 11 opening round. The winner moves on next week to play the Jackson. Miami Trace winner. Jackson is the two seed. Miami Trace is the 15 seed. So Jackson's a big favorite tonight. Granville still doing some of their uh, regular songs, the National Anthem, just a couple minutes away. But the Chiefs, to me, they have to be able to run the ball some. Last week, I thought London just pretty much played pass. You have to be able to run it for mm, 100, maybe 150 yards on the ground, something like that. They've got to be able to run it some. Would you Would you agree with how I look at that? Yeah, and I, you know, I think Coach Kennedy would agree that his offense is kind of, everybody talks about the passing game, and it's predicated on being able to move the ball on the ground and setting things up off that play action, setting things up off the running game. Um, you know, we're coming to this into this game, Bill, after the uh, end of the season accolades were handed out and Bell Fountain with both the offensive and defensive players of the year, Tavian St. Clair, quarterback, um, Alex, uh, Alex Caudell, a linebacker, so, you know, uh, well represented in the All-League, but yeah, I think that the running game with tonight will be Riley Near, probably mixing in a little bit of Harper Scott. Um, I think that running game is going to be key, and I don't think Bell Fountain has to run it 25, 30 times. I think they have to run it really well 15 times in order to set up the downfield passing attack. 
you expect kind of a defensive game or, or, or points? I think there's going to be points scored. I mean, I think both teams will score in the 20s, maybe a little bit higher. But, um, you know, it, it's it's so interesting because, like you said, we don't have any history with Granville. But having watched them a little bit, it is amazing how familiar they look when you look at the two teams on tape. Uh, but, both teams have really athletic linemen. I, I think that Granville, or linebackers, Granville's linebackers really run well to the ball, and so do Bell Fountain. So it's going to be an interesting uh, game. You know, there'll be a feeling out period probably early on, but, um, you know, I think it's going to be a game for the offenses. Well, that's kind of the style of football, certainly at the high school and college level right now, and it's a good night to be an offensive football player. It's not too cold. Should have your rhythm in the passing game here in week 11. And uh, you know, we're, we're excited. It's also a chance for Belfound to get back on track. Belfound won seven games in a row that lost in Week 10. And, but you, you, you're the, uh, always the optimist, I guess, and you said, hey, got to put that behind you. Well, yeah, I mean, there's, there's two seasons, right? Everybody talks about this is the second season. Well, it is the second season. You put the first, last week behind you. You got a co-championship. Yeah, everybody wants the championship outright. You got a co-championship. You're still going to hang 2022 on the banner in the gym. Now it starts a new season, and maybe last week was a little bit of a wake-up call. You know, the Chiefs had won seven straight. They got they got pushed around a little bit last week, and that might have been just the thing that kind of wake, wakes them up a little bit for this run here in the playoffs. Well, their offense has to pick up the pace. The Chiefs only scored one offensive touchdown last week, and we are going to get ready for the National Anthem here. The Granville Band, by the way, it's like watching Judy's Jazzercise. I mean, they ought to be in great shape the way they – move and dance around Don. I don't know if you've taken any of this in as we've uh, watched here. Yeah, I mean, uh, yeah, it's an active band. Um, <laughs> you know, but... Uh, Aerobics. Uh, yeah. But the Chieftains are taking the field, and, and uh, you know, we still haven't got the National Anthem, but Buff Allen's ready to go, and I like that. Still five yeah. minutes left on the clock. Yeah, they're already out. Uh, they're already out, and coaches are trying to figure out why why they're still out on the field, but... Um, oh, Granville is now out of the field in the right end zone. Outside here at, at uh, Granville High. We're down in a little bit of a valley. And now we will fall to the anthem. to the Granville Band for the National Anthem. I'm Bill Tipple with Don Hensley. Big Lou is here with our PeekableHioTV.com video stream. You can, as always, listen to the Chiefs home and away on 107.3 The Drive. That is audio streamed as well. Gary is our videographer. We're set up and we're, we're ready to go. Chiefs won the opening toss. They deferred, so Granville will get the ball to start this game. Granville is to our end zone to the right wearing their white trousers dark blue shirts, a navy blue, I'll call it, deep blue, and their silver helmets, kind of like the Air Force, I guess, would be one of my, my analogies. The Chiefs in their road unis, white jerseys, black numerals trimmed in red, and their black pants. We're ready to tee it up here in week 11 in high school football. Scores throughout the night at peakofohio.com. This game will also be archived on the Peak of Ohio TV YouTube channel. We thank all of our sponsors. They've made it happen all year. 
Each quarter is brought to you by Ruth and Benchik Law. Ruth and Benchik Law is in Kitten. And as I go back to last week, something I will never forget, Don, the Don Hensley player of the game went to Don Hensley and Bill Temple. I'm still laughing about last I don't know whether to cry or laugh after last week's second half in London in press row. Well, I mean, I've never really seen anything like that in the press box before. It was, uh, it was, it bordered on unprofessional, but we'll leave it at that. Um, <laughs> Talking about one of the London assistant coaches. Yeah, actually. and, and, you know, I, and, and then I heard London got a hold of Mr. Vito to, to take it down because the coach was yelling out game secrets. So, I mean, maybe, maybe there was a lesson learned for all there uh, last week. <laughs> Chiefs will come out and tee this football up right at the 40-yard line to our left. It's Alex Grable, the sophomore. He'll kick it left to right. Every kickoff brought to you by Dairy Queen of Alfound. Wes Schrader, who grew up in Lipsick, kind of the Finley area, right outside of Otto Glandorf. Northwest Ohio guy. He's in his third year. He's had great success in his second year last year. Granville made it all the way to the state semifinals. Chiefs coached by Jason Brown, the longtime head coach, and you know, we've seen Belfast really grow defensively. I think I think if I look at one of the maybe the biggest key to the game to me is Belfast being able to do something offensively. They were not very good last week, and Jake Kennedy on our podcast a couple nights ago, what I like about him is he didn't shy away from it. He he, he said the offense wasn't good enough. Well, and he took the he took the blame, and I think that's uh, that's another thing I like about Jake. He, he you know he's not afraid to say that it was his fault, and he uh, he said he learned a few things in that game. And I, I don't know if that was quite fair for him to take the full front, but. Um, you know, there was some things to be learned, and I think the one thing for the Chieftains is that, that Granville is going to be a little bit better matchup. Granville likes to play in space just like Bill Fountain does. Uh, the problem with London is they got like 11 guys in a phone booth trying to fist fight you, and that's just not the, not the kind of football that Bill Fountain is, uh, feel, feels most comfortable playing. Granville did play at Bill Fountain five years ago. Matt Hammond let us know, and I knew that when I said they don't play in sports. I mean in sports in general, but I appreciate Matthew. He's always right on it, but... You know, our first time ever to play Granville at Granville in any sport that I can think of. But five years ago, the Chiefs did win this game big, put up 55 points, and moved on to round two. That yeah, was... I can barely remember yesterday, so that's why Hammer's, uh, uh, you know. The professional. He's, he, he's, he's a joy to have listening and giving us some tips because I just certainly don't remember that. Crable's kick taken by Eckenrode at the 13 near the left hash going right up the middle of the field. Looks to burst it outside and a good tackle, a gang tackle by the Chiefs. Eckenrode was about to bust it loose on the near hash, but the Chiefs closed in and made the tackle right around the 28 or 29 yard line. See where they'll spot this football. I believe it's the 29, so not bad field position for the Granville Blue Aces. You're listening to High School Football on WPKO HD2 Bell Fountain, 107.3 the driver, home of the Chiefs home and away, and here comes the Granville offense. Decent sized lineman. They have a pretty good runner, as Don said, and one of the brothers, but they're known for throwing the football here at Granville. Matt Chikowski is the running back right next to his quarterback. He gets the give. Hit in the backfield. Oh, my. First play from scrimmage blown up by three Chiefs. Sullivan Ashcraft, Hayden Manns, and Eli Moore make a Chieftain sandwich out of Chikowski. He lost a yard. That was just really simple football right there. Manns and Ashcraft beat their man off the ball. Uh, Ashcraft, he could be a load for the lineman here. They're not that big up front. No. Their quarterback's tall, though. He is a tall guy, six foot four. Ernsberger rolls right, wants to pass, throws back the other way, a screen to Barasa, who's their best skill kid. He's in the open field, 35 40. Still on his feet and knocked out of bounds on the near side at the 49. A throwback screen, well executed by Granville. The quarterback that time rolled to his right a few steps. Ernsberger and threw back to the left side near the Granville sideline right in front of us. And Barasa with a big gain, a gain of 21. And Granville going hurry up there, right back to the line, snap the ball. Jakowski gets the give. He's got a little bit of a seam, and he'll spin to about the 42-yard line. So after a loss, Granville is coming out, firing on all cylinders. And there, and their coach winding his arm, saying, get back up there. They're going with a very fast pace right now. Second and two. Ernsberger wants to throw. Barrasso makes the catch. Spins out of a tackle. Hit hard. Eli Moore made an excellent play. Inside-out pursuit. And Barrasso brought down for eh, maybe a gain of about a foot. So this is a big third down. But even if Granville gets no gain, I, they're aggressive. I think they go. Eli Moore running to the football. That's his strength right there. Yeah. He just missed it on the first time they ran the same play. Just missed the tackle. Now, now Granville changes to some heavier package. And it's a wildcat to 
Tchaikovsky. Oh, that's going to be close. And right to about the 41. I he think it's about 41. I think it is a first down. I don't know. The mark. Yeah, they're going to give it to him. Yeah, on these turf fields. They've just got the first down to the Bell Fountain 41. This drive started at the Granville 29. No score. We're just underway here in the first quarter at Granville High in the Division Three Region 11 opening round. Ernsberger in shotgun with Tchaikowski off to his right hip. Now they look over at the sideline, kind of slow it down a little bit, even though they're still not huddling. Play clock at 10. Ernsberger gets the snap, wants to pass, has time, looking, has a nice pocket, throws downfield, middle of the field, the receiver Ooh. lost the football, what a hit. What it's a hit. incomplete. Oh my goodness, laying the lumber at the 18 was Kalen Organ. That, that's one of the best hits I've seen all year. And the Granville receiver is shook up, and I totally understand that. Jack Yeager, the sophomore, a little guy, Got open down the seam around the left hash, right, just inside the ball found 20, but he got drilled. Well, the best thing about that play was how clean it was. Uh, you know, his head was up, shoulder into the midsection, but great defensive play right there by Oregon. He's, he's, his defensive cornerback skills have just improved, it seems, week in and week out. I think he's the most improved player on the team. Second and 10 for Granville at the ball found 41. No score. First possession of the game. Ernsberger wants to pass again. Blitz coming from Moore. Ernsberger steps up, throws towards the goal line. Has a man there, but he overshoots a bit about the four-yard line. That time snap was beaten on a, just a go route down the right hash. A long throw. Ernsberger threw it about 45 yards. He needed to take a couple of yards off of it. It's third and ten. A very aggressive offense, though. And Don talked about that before the kick. A lot, very heavy passing. Yeah, it'll be interesting here to see, uh, you know, that time they dialed up the blitz, got a little pressure. They hadn't really been able to get any pressure so far this series, just rushing the, you know, the three or four down linemen. But that time they were able to get home a little bit and hurry the throw. 9.47 to go in the opening quarter. No score. Play clock is down to five for Granville. Hernsberger gets the snap, has time. Now looks to step up, possibly run, throws downfield, and he overshoots his receiver around the 23-yard line. Carter snapping coverage. And it brings up fourth and ten. Great defensive concept right there. They rushed three. They dropped. They dropped their linebackers back. And really, there was no place for Ernsberger to throw the football. Looks like they're going to go for it, though. Yeah. Would you? No, I'd probably punt it and pin I think deep, I, but... I think I would too. The punter is Mikey Chaykowski. Mikey is a slot receiver, but Ernsberger is in shotgun. I think they go. I really liked what uh, Coach Peitzmeier, uh did right there as far as showing the blitz and then backing the linebackers out. Uh, you want to give a quarterback, especially a senior quarterback, as many different looks like that as possible. Fourth and ten, Granville will go. Uh, it could be a short punt formation. It is. Ernsberger snaps, drops back and punts it. It's a good punt inside the ten. And the what Chiefs is, watch. <laughs> I wasn't on. thought about picking it up, but he did I'm not. Not too sure what Mr. Morgan was doing there, but... Uh, he did not touch it, though. Yeah. But the ball is touched up at the ball on five-yard line. And, you know, it's one of those uh, fluky plays where it almost hit Oregon as the punt came down. Ernsberger dropped back into short punt formation. He's not the punter. And, you know, there was no punt returner, but it almost hit Oregon as it just came down to the ground as well. You know, I always like that play, too, because no one's, there's nobody back there. So if you've got a quarterback that can do it, um, it's always a good thing to do, like inside the 40, because you're not going to get a return man back. No, there was no return because there was no return man. So it's a net of 36 yards. The Chiefs start at their own five-yard line. St. Clair in shotgun, standing at his own goal line. Puts a man in motion. St. Clair wants to pass, throws, caught by his receiver, trying to get a block. Moves upfield towards the 10, still fighting. Scrum of humanity, Lyman piling in as well. And the receiver brought down at the 10 on a receiver screen to the left, five-yard gain. I think everybody got a little push in there, and I think the official might have even been in there shoving. Second and five. I think it was Wilson that caught it. It was. Yeah, he was split out wide left. So that's the Bell Fountain running game right there without Fogan. There's yeah. a lot of those yep. quick screens. Quick passes horizontally. No score. Just inside of nine minutes in the opening quarter here at Granville. St. Clair in shotgun. Puts Reams in motion. And it's a give to the running back near, who's got a little bit of a seam, fighting, fighting, fighting. And yeah, maybe got just a yard. I thought he got a little bit more, but the, you know, Granville plays this three, some people call it a 3-3-5, three, three, some people call it a 3-5-3. Three, three. 
but I'll call five, five linebackers. They really get to the ball. Yeah, they close that gap right away. Now they bring in uh, big Hayden Manns into that uh, wingback spot, who's a heck of a lead blocker. I have a guess pass, though, here, Don. Third and four for Bell Fountain, just outside their own 10. they got to get to their own 15. No score. 8.15 to go in the opening quarter. St. Clair in shotgun. What's the pass? Looking, looking, looking. Rolls. Lops it to his big guy, Hayden Manns, who makes a very acrobatic catch at the 20 for a first down. Good touch pass by St. Clair. Gain of nine, and the defender had his back to the line of scrimmage. He did not see the ball, but St. Clair just looped it over to the defender's head. A little playoff wrinkle right there, getting Manns involved in the passing game right there. Nice play call. Manns was like a guy going up for the defensive rebound. He went up. Showed some nice hands. High point of the, the looping pass, nine-yard gain. First and ten for the Chiefs, their own 20. Wing to the left, four receivers to work with. St. Clair wants to pass, throws out towards the flat, and incomplete. Thank goodness he, sh he threw it a little too long. If he un threw it shallow, it was going to be undercut and maybe picked off by Granville. Yeah, that was, uh, that was nobody was really open there. It almost looked like it was kind of getting thrown away. Um, you know, a pass like that has to be in rhythm. and. Maxton Mester in coverage, which we talked about him in the drive yeah, over. Maxton is uh, related to um, Bill Patterson. Bill Patterson and through marriage to Coach Reed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Bill used to be the Bellfound Athletic Director, so pretty good coverage by Mester. There was no opening there, as Don said. St. Clair rolls right, looking, has time, still has time, throws towards his man, who could not make the catch around the 23. Long developing play as St. Clair rolled right to the wide side of the field, and now it's a third and 10. Well, this is one thing that Bell Fountain hasn't seen much of this year is defensive backs that can run with their wide receivers. It's been a little bit of a mismatch throughout most of the season. Bell Fountain skilled kids against the defense, but tonight, Granville's got the type of team that uh, can run with them. Third and 10. For the Chiefs, Granville showing a possible blitz. And we have a flag thrown by the side judge. Offsides. On Granville. You're right about that. Is it? Uh, yeah, they were. It was a third and five situation. Yeah, they were bringing the blitz, and I think the blitzer just kind of jumped over the line of scrimmage. Third and five for the Chiefs. Play clock is down to 16. No in this game. 7:40 to go in the opening quarter. That was the pass. Time now it starts to break down. Looking, 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 goes downfield, that man there, by Wilson, inside the 50, 40, gets a block, looks to reverse field, and tackle from behind, inside the 30 at the 26-yard line. What an ad lib by St. Clair and Wilson, they got great chemistry, first down play all the way to the 27-yard line, that is a big game for the Chiefs. A gain of some 48 yards, one of our RV wholesalers long distance connections. Yeah, I like what Wilson did there. Usually on the scramble play, they teach you to come back to the quarterback. There, Wilson decided to cut it downfield and he was wide open. He was, and uh, Granville did a good job to not give up and, and finally go get him. First and 10 for the Chiefs at the Granville 27. Here's a blitz on the offsides. They are. The left end, left defensive end for Granville came across the side. This, right. is good, this is good game planning by the Chiefs right here. Obviously, they've seen something on film, and this is the second time they've been able to take advantage of that. Yeah, no question. And uh, these are free yards. Interesting game so far, though. Both teams, you know, trying to play pretty much finesse football. No score. Chiefs with the first and five at the Granville 22-yard line. St. Clair wants to pass. There's plenty of time. Lux throws end zone. Has a man there. And he goes up for the ball. Flag thrown. Touchdown catch made anyways. Touchdown in the left corner of the end zone by the Chiefs. It's C.J. Wilson. It looked to me like a defensive pass interference. It won't matter. And the Chiefs strike first. A 22-yard touchdown pass to the left corner of the end zone from St. Clair to Wilson. For St. Clair, his 24th touchdown pass of the season. The Chiefs strike first, 6.44 to go in the opening quarter. Both found six, Granville nothing. We've seen it all year, that trust that St. Clair has in C.J. Wilson to go high point and outfight the defensive back has been there all year. 
And again, another example right there of just the trust he has in him as he threw it up in the corner, and Wilson just outfought the defensive back for the ball. He's a great receiver. Great receiver. Yeah, there's the call, pass interference on defense. The defender just did not get turned around to look at the ball. And uh, so even if it would have been incomplete, it would have moved it inside the 15-yard line. But the Chiefs will take the score. 6 nothing Chiefs, 6.44 to go in the opening quarter here at Granville. Crable out for the conversion. 26 yards? Yeah, 22. 22. Near puts it down. Kick is put up, and the kick is good. Point after touchdown, thanks to Fistle floor covering. Chief strike first. A 95-yard touchdown drive. Belfound seven. Granville nothing on the Quest Federal Credit Union High School Football Scoreboard. More after this on 107.3 The Drive and peakofohiotv.com. Hungry after the game? Ready to celebrate the weekend? Ron's Pizza is open late tonight until 11 o'clock. Stop in for a hot, fresh pizza and a nice cold beer. Or call to pick it up at 292-7775. Pull up to the drive through window and you don't even have to get out of the car. They have specialty pizzas like buffalo chicken, chicken bacon ranch, taco, BLT, and barbecue chicken. They also offer cauliflower or broccoli and cheddar crusts. Ron's Pizza, South Main Bell Fountain, 292-7775. Welcome back. They assess the defensive pass interference actually on the kickoff here, Don. Hmm. Okay. So the Chiefs, instead of kicking from their own 40, will tee it up and kick at the Granville 45. Just joining us, the Chiefs struck first. A 95-yard touchdown drive capped off with a 22-yard touchdown pass from St. Clair to C.J. Wilson. There was defensive pass interference. 6.44 to go in the opening quarter, and Bell Fountain leads it 7-0. Do you dare onside it? Well, there's so many things you can do here. You can try to pop it straight up. I mean, most teams end up kicking it straight out of the end zone. And But I'm like, it's playoff time, Bill. Why not? <laughs> Grable has it teed up at the Grand Bill 45. How often do you get to say that? Kickoff brought to you by Derek Lee to Bell Fountain. And he kicks it high, kicks it deep. And it goes about nine yards deep into the end zone. And Grand Bill will start at the 20 on the touchback. Again, tonight's quarter-by-quarter -quarter coverage brought to you by Roof and Benchick Law. Roof and Benchick Law is in Kenton. The Chiefs strike first. And they uh, they gave Granville a bunch of different defensive looks. What kind of surprised me about Granville, now I don't see any game film coming in, is just how at times they wanted to go super hurry up. Yeah, I mean, they, they obviously want to try to speed things up. And Buffon doesn't do a lot of substitution. But uh, they want to speed things up and, and go quick, which, uh, you know, they might even speed it up even more now that they're down seven. Oregon and Caden Snap at corners. The safeties are Cullen Deitch and Carter Snap. And those three linebackers will be so important tonight. Alex Caudill, Harper Scott, and Eli Moore. Chiefs up 7 nothing. Ernsberger gets his running back set off to his left. He'll look to pass, has a man open, and Verasso makes the catch, spinning out of tackles, and will finally be just stood up around the 32 on a Slant route, he's dangerous. I, you know, Coach Schrader said he's our, our best skill player. I believe it. He's a guy that uh, his run after catch ability is, uh, is very high. Yeah, I just wonder how, how long Belfound will continue to give him the space they're giving him. I think I'd like to get up in his face and maybe roll that safety over for a little bit of protection, but play bump and run and, and take away that short passing game that they've tried to exploit here. Here, and here you see it. Yeah, the organ's right up on him, a 12 yard completion. Here's a run by Tchaikovsky looking to run inside. And he got to about the 35. Gain of three, second and seven. 6.05 to go in the opening quarter. Bell found seven. Granville nothing. Actually, we'll call it second and six, give him four yards. Bell found opened in the 4-3. Now they're 3-4 in this uh, defensive series. Yeah, they are. Ashcraft, a linebacker. Moore looking to blitz off the edge. Play clock is at 12 for Ernsberger. Now he's got two running backs, one off to each hip. Ernsberger wants to pass, though. Has pressure coming from Shannon. He's hit as he throws it. It's incomplete. Boy, Declan Shannon just beat his guy. Almost took his head off. Hit him up around the shoulder pads. The uh, Granville crowd wants a face mask. I think it was up more no, around shoulder, the shoulder shoulders. and neck area, yeah. This isn't the NFL. <laughs> But what, what impressed me, 
even if there would have been a flag, which there was not, is just the one-two to get to the quarterback. And Declan Shannon has 14 tackles for loss this year, second-team All-CBC player, really came out of nowhere this year for the Chiefs. A lot of one-two on that play, Don, to beat the left tackle. Now the Chiefs go four-man front, Ashcraft is back to end. I wonder if on this play they don't bring some heat. Play clock down to five. Ernsberger wants to pass. Has time, looking, looking, looking. Overton Story hits him as he throws it. It's incomplete downfield right in front of us around the 30. And Ernsberger was planted again. Hey, hey man, is down. hurt, though. That's, that's trouble right there. Yeah, he's down on the field. Grabbing his left knee. Trying to get up. And his teammates will just help him get up. But he's got to kind of... That's a big, tough boy right there. He bounce off the field. I don't know. Well, it could be his ankle, maybe. Yeah, he, he, he kind of snatched the back, almost like he pulled a muscle. But uh, I'm no doctor, Bill. Well, he will go off. He can only put any weight on his right leg as we watch this on the peak of Ohio TV .com as well. That is, and he's a two-way player and a, and a very good defensive lineman. That's really where he uh, makes his money, so to speak, here, where he's, he's known for. He's a first-team all-league defensive lineman. Fourth and six, I would think, a punt situation. And... Ernsberger's had some heat. He's not a running quarterback. He's had some lanes to run if he wanted, but that's not what he wants to do. No, and Belfon's done a nice job showing different fronts, showing different looks, backing out of it, bringing the heat. You know, I think the defensive uh, game plan so far has been very impressive for the Chiefs. Fourth and six. Tchaikovsky rolls to his right, punts it. It's a high punt in the middle of Nowheresville, though. It's the 33 and bounces uh, all the way inside the 20, uh, inside the 15, inside oh, wow. the 10. Down to the eighth. That's like the Hensley pitching wedge. It just oh. kept going and going and going. Oh, you just you got to catch the football. Well, it was so shallow. I know what you're saying. Sometimes you're better on, off not to, not to kick it, though, very far. Come on, Bill. It hit the 30. You gave just gave him 21 yards. I know. You don't have to catch it on the fly. You can still catch it on the bounce. Could have caught it on the bounce. You're right. 7 nothing. Chiefs lead it. And we'll take a quick break and come back with more after this. Hi, this is Matt Brown, owner of Iron City Sports Bar, home of the best wings, burgers, and steaks in Logan County since 2017. My staff and I would like to wish the best of luck to the Bell Fountain High School football team, cheerleading staff, and coaching staff as they take on Granville this week in playoffs. Dine in with us before the game, order carryout, or choose delivery by DoorDash. More information can be found at www.ironcitysportsbar.com. Back at Granville, the punt actually went all the way down to the seven. Chiefs lead Granville seven nothing. 4:58 to go in the first quarter when we were going. Riley Near took that top pass and went for nine yards. Second and one for the Chiefs. 4:49 to go in the opening quarter. Bell found in front, seven nothing. St. Clair in shotgun with Near off to his right. Second and one. It's a give to Near trying to run left, reverses field. Tries to get upfield and didn't get much on the cutback. But I think he got, well, let's see, it's close to the marker. He's at about the 19. They say move the sticks, first down Chiefs. He got about a yard, maybe a yard and a half. Actually, I guess that ball found drive started at the nine because they have a first and 10 at the 19. So they got just 10 yards in those two plays. Yeah, you know, they don't, with Riley near at tailback, they're not going to run a lot tonight. Uh, they got to have 12, 13, you know, solid running plays. Um, First and 10, Chiefs up 7 0, 4 10 to go in the opening quarter. Near in motion. Now in motion's back out towards us. St. Clair wants the pass, throws it to Near. Near looking to get a block, lost his footing. And when he lost his footing, he lost about three yards. Is that one of those swing passes? Turf Monster reached up and got him. Second and 13 for the Chiefs. At their own 16-yard line, Belfound does not have field position, but they lead at 7-0. 335 to go in the opening quarter. St. Clair in shotgun with two running backs next to him. One to the left, one to the right. That's actually Landon Kelly who's a wing. Throw out in the flat, caught by C.J. Wilson. Looks to reverse field inside and brought down around the 21. So he got five. It will be third and about eight for the Chiefs. Granville not a, they have a couple decent sized down guys on the front, but well, their back eight can all run. 
Yeah, I mean, like we talked about, they're, it's an absolute mirror image of the Chieftains. They like to play in space, and, and they're athletic. Third and eight. Play clock at 12. St. Clair may be changing things here as he gets the call from the sidelines. 2.45 to go in the opening quarter. Near goes in motion to the left sideline. St. Clair wants to pass throws, middle of the field, caught by his receiver who makes the first down catch, then gets dropped right away at the 37, and that was Deitch. Well, they got great third down. Third down connection all year long. That's a big one. That's a gain of 16 on one of those. That'll make it 17 up to the 38 on one of those square ends. Yeah, Deitch runs some great routes, and uh, that time the ball was delivered on time. The Fonts offensive line has done a nice job tonight uh, keeping the pocket clean for St. Clair. He's rolled him a couple times, but uh, for the most part, good pass protection. Granville with three down guys. Now, they might blitz occasionally, but they only play with a three-man front. Chiefs in front, 7 nothing. 2-10 to go in the opening quarter. Near in motion. Now he gets right behind Kelly, and they give it to Near. Gets a little bit of a seam. Well, that's a different formation. Both running backs. Now, Kelly's really a blocker. Is off to the left hip of St. Clair, and it's kind of like eye formation to the left of the quarterback. I've not seen that play all year. Yeah, and then he uh, near did a nice job of cutting it back against the grain right there. Um, he's not really, you know, probably much of a kind of foot in the ground, make a cut and go downhill kind of, kind of runner, but that time, you know, he, he got north and south a lot quicker than he had in the first two runs. Well, he got all he could get out of it. Got five yards, but five yards for the Chiefs on first down running the football. They'll take that all night. 1.30 to go in the opening quarter. Chiefs in front. 7 nothing. And it's a toss play to near, trying to get wide left, gets a couple of blocks, and then gets, <laughs> gets hit pretty hard right around the Bow Fountain 44-yard line. Sets up a third and mm, about four. And yeah, they need to get to their own 48. Third and four. 7 nothing. our score. I can't really, it's so far away from us, but do you have any feel for what's going on with Hayden Manns, Don? No, I... I, I don't. I haven't been able to see him on the sidelines. I don't either. Third and four for the Chiefs. And now they look over at the sideline. Play clock is down to 10. Quarter clock is down to 45 seconds. Well found in front. 7 nothing here at Granville. High snap. St. Clair covers it up. Looking either way from the defender. Rolls, keeps his footing. Now looks to reverse field. Hit by his feet. Still has a defender coming towards him. And brought down around the 27-yard line as he kept retreating. The staff was a little high, more than the, the, the height. I think the, the speed that came back to him surprised him. And the errant snap exchange just kills that drive. Chiefs lose big yardage. St. Clair gets dropped all the way back at his 28. Yeah, so a loss of 16. It was high and it was pretty quick. Like you said, um, you know, could have been handled though. Yeah. You know, I, I, I think there, if he'd have kept his head up, he might have been able to throw the football. But at that point, he was in scramble mode. Yeah, fourth and... Oh, what have we got here? A stoppage by the umpire. That might be the end of the quarter. It is. We'll take a break. First quarter is in the books. The Chiefs lead Granville 7-0 here in the Division Three Region 11 opening round of the high school football playoffs. Back with more after this. At Bell Fountain's Best Car Wash, we take care of your vehicle 100%. From the first drop of hot, clean water to the last stroke of our super soft, shine-enhancing towel. And you can choose from four levels of clean. Basic, plus, premium, and ultimate. Starting at just eight bucks. Bell Fountain's Best Car Wash, 720 South Main. Stop by Lee's famous recipe chicken for a 10-piece strips meal at a great price. With 10 premium strips, two large sides, five healthy biscuits, and three sauces, this is difficult chicken done right. Get the 10-piece strips meal at a terrific price, only at Lee's. Back at Granville, we begin the second quarter with the Chiefs punting for the first time tonight. Drive started at the nine. Chiefs were cooking, but then they had a, a tackle for loss after the snap exchange issue. And the punter, C.J. Wilson, standing back at his 15, gets off a very high punt. And the punt returner calls for the fair catch and makes it at his own 40-yard line. So a punt that time of 32 yards. No return that time by the return man, Miles Eckenrode, one of the 12 seniors for Granville. West Schrader in his third year here has the team coming along, but Bell Fountain had opening quarter controlled things, and the Chiefs lead it 7-0. Yeah. 
Yeah, Belfon's done a good job against the Granville passing attack so far, uh, showing different looks and really strong play in the second secondary. Uh, there hasn't been a lot of open Granville receivers. The Tchaikovsky brothers in the backfield flanking the quarterback, Ernsberger. They'll start at the 41 of their own side of the field. Chiefs in front, 7-0, 11.54 to go. It's a little bit of a misdirection play. And Tchaikovsky's into the open and brought down. Good short tackle by Carter Staff, but not until Tchaikovsky gets to the 45-yard line. 14-yard gain, and Granville comes out with the ground game on this series. Nice little counter action. Good news for the Chiefs, though, is Hayden Manns is back in the game, so that's, uh, that's, a, bit, that's a really good sign for the Buff Mountain front four, front four three. Didn't look like he'd be back. I mean, it was, you know, yeah. it's kind of hard to tell, but he, he looked like he had some real issues getting off the field last possession, last defensive possession. First and 10 for the Blue Aces at the Bell Found 45. Chiefs show a possible linebacker, linebacker blitz. <laughs> Eli Moore runs right past the ball carrier, who's into the secondary, but has a first down run to the 31 yard line. More that time, maybe make it the 32-yard line, gain of 13. But more that time, blitzed himself out of the play. Yeah, you got to come, on that kind of a blitz, you got to come and break down at the line of scrimmage. He got way too deep. Yeah. The right idea with the pursuit, but he got to go more flat than upfield. Yeah, I'm impressed by Manns being back in the game. Uh, he's, he, he just, he's wired that way, though. He seems like the type of kid that you'd have to take out of here in a stretcher before he wouldn't be able to play. Granville on the move, though. First and 10. Here's Tchaikovsky running again, breaking through a couple of tackles, but Eli Moore swings him down after he got about one. Second and nine, 10.50 to go in the opening half. The Chiefs lead the Blue Aces, 7-0. Well, they'll say, really? Yeah, they'll give him a yard. Second and nine. At yeah, that time, Moore did a nice job of staying home, you know, breaking down. And, you know, that onside linebacker spot, he's almost a defensive end in some sets, and did a nice job that time of kind of collapsing that line and making the play. Play clock at 15 and a really strange formation by Granville. Four receivers bunched to the right. Morasso to the top of the formation by himself and man coverage with Oregon. Ernsberger wants to pass, looking, has pressure, gets away from some pressure. Here comes Manns. He's still in the backfield, throws it up and he throws it out of bounds. Right around the 30 yard line, Ernsberger Dumped on his backside again. Boy, Manns just didn't give up on the play. Incomplete, third and nine. And that time the pass rush just blew up the play. Yeah, that was an interesting play. It looked like they were he was looking to the right, but I, I really think he was going to come back left on the Rosso. man that was manned up on yeah. the up on yeah. top of the field there. And yeah, Rosso and Oregon, yeah. I think that's what he wanted to do too, Don. But and he just didn't have time. No. And Granville never huddles. That's what we see so much in High school and pro football, they all just stand at the line and look over at the sidelines. Early in the game, they went very up-tempo, but now they're kind of taking their time. Play clock is at four. Ernsberger in shotgun. Gets his running back set. Wants to pass. Has pressure again. Maybe a receiver screen. It is. Receiver Tchaikovsky breaking tackles. And then just basically lost his footing, but all the way down to the 18-yard line. That was well set up. They let the rush come in. And first down for the Blue Aces, a gain of 13. They're in the red zone at the Chiefs' 18-yard line. Yeah, there's no better way to beat a good pass rush than, than the middle screen right there. And uh, coming out of the backfield, that's a tough play to defend when you got a blitz coming. Mikey Tchaikovsky, he's the running back receiver. The, something happened to his arm the last few weeks. You could tell it's bandaged up, so to speak, padded up, but he's still out there playing. And this is a play pass. Ernsberger throws, caught by his receiver who lost his footing, then got bumped out of bounds by Carter Snap on the near side around the 17. It was Mikey Tchaikovsky again, gain of, well, I'll give him about three. Ooh, I don't know that he got quite that much, but welcome to Granville. Second and seven coming up for the Blue Aces. So he got bumped out at the, yeah, the 16, that's about right. Second and seven for the Blue Aces. Chiefs need to make a stop. Belfound's doing a nice job of taking the wide receivers away downfield, so they've had to check it down now to the running backs the last couple of plays. Yeah, Ernsberger not a runner, but he's a heady player. He's been dumped on his head a couple of times. He has been hit hard. Second and seven. And here's Eckenrode trying to run. It's a reverse. And maybe they're going to throw to the end zone. Throw that way. The Chiefs looking, looking, looking. And it is a incompletion. Nice play. Caden Snap never gave up. The quarterback was open. Ernsberger, it was a, 
It was an end around, then a reverse, and Verasso tried to throw downfield into the right corner of the end zone to Ernsberger, who was open at the beginning of the play. A trick play, and it's incomplete for third and seven. Snap just never quit battling the wide receiver. Ern in this no. case, the quarterback <laughs> for the ball was able to rip it away. Is that what you call the Philly special we saw in week one at Sydney? Yeah. I mean, I guess that's what we call yeah. it now. Yeah. Well, the Philadelphia did that in the Super it's Bowl. It's been about, what, now four or five years, yeah. so yeah. we need a new name for it. Yeah. Ernsberger looks over to the left. He's got three receivers that way. Play clock is at one. Play clock at one when he got rid of it. Looking, he's got pressure coming from Keegan Overton Stoy. Hitting the backfield, throws, and he th throws it incomplete to Tchaikovsky. And Ernsberger slow to get up, but again, welcome to the Belfan defensive front. It's fourth and seven, and here comes the field goal team. One of the real strengths of Granville's team, though, this young man is their outside linebacker, but probably no more for his kicking ability. And that is Noah Music. He's a junior. Last week he hit a 42-yarder and a 45-yarder. This week he'll try a 32-yarder. He has got a big leg. I'll tell you what, Belfound is absolutely teed off on Ernsberger. He is shaken <laughs> up again. He's, he's the holder as well, but you're right. He's still getting the passes off. They have he can barely get down on a knee. <laughs> <laughs> Play clock is at four. He's ready. He gets the snap. It's put down. Kick by Music is up, and he kicks it deep, and he kicks it through. And that was well over the upright. He can drill it. So Granville takes advantage of some good field position. Drive started at their 41. They knock in the field goal from 32 yards. We'll take a break. 8.39 to go in the first half. And they'll find Lee's Granville 7-3. More after this. Hi, it's Liz at Bell Fountains Comfort Inn. Our Fountain Lounge is Bell Fountain's fun night spot. And right now, we're looking for an experienced bartender who will enjoy working in our fun atmosphere. If you like people, you'll love working at Comfort Inn. Apply in person or call 599-5555. Bartenders at the Comfort Inn earn more than $9 an hour, and that's plus tips. If you're an experienced mixologist, check out the Fountain Lounge experience. Apply in okay. person at the Comfort Inn where 68 meets 33, or call during business hours at 599-5555. Homer Insurance Agency in DeGraff offers insurance coverage for home, life, auto, commercial, and farm. Visit their website at homerinsuranceagency.com for their number and more information. Homer Insurance Agency, specializing in helping you with the right coverage. Back at Granville, kickoff brought to you by Dairy Queen of Bell Fountain. You know, the music just hit the 32-yard field goal. The Chiefs lead the Blue Aces 7-3. Kickoff is a low wobbler. Hits around the three and then just bounds into the end zone. A line drive, so a touchback. The Chiefs will have another long field. They've had no field position tonight. The drives have started at the five, the nine, and now the 20. Second quarter action presented by Roof and Benchick Law. Roof and Benchick Law is in Kenton. Coming up at the post game, we'll have our Don Hensley player of the game. This is a good one. As we've settled in here and watched uh, a quarter plus, I think we're seeing two you know, pretty even teams. Yeah, St. Clair has had a you know good first quarter. He's 8 of 10 for 111 yards in the touchdown. I mean, I think they're evenly matched. I think Belfountain uh, maybe is touch better than Granville thought they would be on defense. Belfountain's been able to get home to the quarterback quite often. Yeah, yeah, that's something that Granville needs to work on. You're right. Here comes a give to Near, looking for a seam, runs into his own lineman, then gets a push from his lineman, and he got about three. And Near boy plays hard. He is not built like your prototypical running back. More of a slot receiver, but that time I thought he, he got everything the play had there for him. Yeah, you know, they're going to line him up at uh, running back. You're also going to see him empty the backfield quite a bit, which is probably where Bell Fountain feels most comfortable with everybody uh, out in, in near back in the slot position. And that's how they set up right now. Four receivers along with the uh, wing back. Here goes in motion right to left. St. Clair looking to pass. Looking, looking, now he maybe is going to step up and run. He does, 20, 25, works out of a tackle, hit, and then knocked down around the 28-yard line. Hard hit over by the Belfound sideline. We do have a flag, though, back at the backfield around the 14. It will be holding on the Chiefs, and that could be a drive killer. St. Clair's run was pretty good. He worked out of a tackle, was going to make it third and about a yard and a half, but now will be second and a bunch. Still like to see him slide there, Bill. I mean, I, I, I get it, but uh, there's a lot of eggs in that basket right now. Yeah, playoff time. I know what you're saying. You're looking to the future. No, I'm not looking to the future. I'm looking to, like, the next series. <laughs> <laughs> well, 
Well, that's still the future. I mean, who's I, I know what you're saying. Uh, if he goes down, you're you're slinging it. Ooh, that's not half. pretty. We get, get Wilson line up a punt formation <laughs> because it won't be good. Uh, second and uh, oh boy. Second and wow, 22. First holding penalty of the game. Bell Fountain had you know, too many of those last week against London. Now the Chiefs put a wing in motion. There's no running back, so you would think for sure a pass play. Now Near goes in motion. Now he gets into the backfield off the St. Clair's right hip. And it's a give to Near. Near looking to cut it upfield. Nice run. 15. Bounces forward to the 20. Good run to, by Near to give them really a chance on third down. And a 12-yard run. That was well done. Yeah, he's, he was able to get a nice hole that time for him to run through, but uh, that was a tough call for the Chiefs because it was a, ended up being a 15-yard holding penalty That's because it was called spot. during the scramble. Yeah. Third and 10 for the Chiefs. They lead it 7-3, 7.20 to go in the opening half. St. Clair wants to pass. Has time. Looking, looking. Now looks to step up. Throws downfield. Has a man there, and Near tries to make the catch with one hand. Kind of an errant pass over his head. He couldn't quite haul it into the 32. And here comes a punting situation for the Chiefs. Fourth and 10 coming up in coverage that time again was Maxton Mester, the junior strong safety. Well, the same thing that Herb Bell found against London just hurt him there too, and that is the, the penalties. You know, you got to stay clean, especially when you don't have the field position. Bell Fountain, best starting field position of the night has been their own 20. Yeah, they've had no field position. 7-3, Chiefs lead it, 7-11 to go in the opening half. Wilson gets a good snap, gets it out of there. It's a low liner this time, hits it to 47, but good job by the return man, Eckenrode, to pick it up on the bounce, and he saved his team some yardage. Returns it to about the Bow Fountain 44, return of about 9 or 10 yards. See where they're going to mark it up here. I guess it will be the Bell Found 45. But this kicking game, really the kickoff by kicking into the end zone, set up the uh, defense of uh, Granville, then their offense once their defense got the stop. So as uh, Coach Browns calls it, complimentary football. Well, yeah, the 15-yard penalty was the, yeah. the, the backbreaker for the Chiefs on that series. First and 10. Chiefs at a four-man front. Ernsberger gives it off to Tchaikovsky. Hit by a brick wall of Chiefs, and no gain. It's Eli Moore there, maybe Zane Bailey. Neither team has been able to run the football, really, much much at all. A little bit here and there. Second and 10, 6.40 to go in the opening half. The Chiefs lead the Blue Aces 7-3. Well, Granville emptied their bag of tricks last series. They ran a middle screen. They ran a little, you know, the, the Philly special. They yeah. <coughs> Tried just about everything on that last series. Yeah, the double reverse pass to the quarterback did not work. Here comes Tchaikovsky trying to run around left side. Gets a little bit of a seam. Then Declan Shannon rides him down at the 41. Gain of four, third and six for the Blue Aces. Well, they've tried to run a little bit more. Of course, they have field position right now. I would think right here is a pass, though. Yeah, their running backs aren't real big either. Uh, <laughs> Their main running back, Matt Tchaikowski, six foot, about 190. If he's six foot, 190. <laughs> Third and six for the Blue Aces. Chiefs show a possible blitz. Then they drop out of it. Ernsberger throws, wants to throw, throws it into his receiver who makes the catch. And it will be short of the first down. Little cat and mouse game. The receiver, Tchaikowski, made the catch at the 36. And I think they might try a field goal again. Well, I'll tell you what, Ernsberger is going to wake up tonight, and Hayden Manns is going to be sitting there watching him in his bedroom. I mean, this kid has taken a beating. Actually, maybe they'll get in a power formation, maybe a wildcat. Play clock is at 20. Granville looks over at the bench. I thought they might try a long field goal, but they'll go for it on fourth and one. It's a wildcat look. The running back gets the first down. First down run to the 26. Running back is in shotgun. There really is no quarterback. The two blockers, and uh, it's worked a couple times on short yardage tonight. So fourth and one. Rambo at the Bofound 36 goes and gets five yards. First down to the Chiefs, 31. 5-10 to go in the opening half, and Bofound still leads it 7-3, but Granville is moving right now. I like Harper Scott there trying to time that up, flying over top of the center, trying to make the play. 
That's good stuff right there. <laughs> now, Erzberger in shotgun with Matt Tchaikowski to his right. He wants to pass again. Looks, looks, looks. Throws downfield towards the end zone. Chiefs in coverage, and it's incomplete. And Erzberger that time threw it up to a spot. Deitch was three yards deep in the end zone. Good coverage, second and ten. I Chiefs still playing cat and mouse. Have Don explain it. He can probably explain it better than me. A few plays ago, I think it would have been three plays ago, they act like it's a blitz, then drop out of it. Yeah, they've been doing that most of the night, showing different fronts, showing like they're going to blitz and drop it out, showing like a three-man front and then blitzing, uh, all to kind of rattle the quarterback. I think the reason I think he gets hit so much is he waits so long. Second and ten. Here's an inside give by Chaykowski. Good tackle. Counter action. It did not work. Or maybe a yard gain. Ernsberger holds the ball a long time. He does. Basically, he's, he's taking a beating for his team, but he waits and waits and waits. Third and nine after a one-yard gain on the counter. This is a big play. I, I almost want to see an incompletion just to see if they'll line up for a 47-yard field well, goal. Well, they, they, the, the coach, Coach Schrader, says that music can hit those. Really no breeze tonight. Play clock at 10. Tchaikovsky now off to the right side of Ernsberger. It's a pass play. Maybe a screen pressure coming, and it's incomplete. Tchaikovsky tried to make the catch in the backfield, but it was an errant throw, and now brings up fourth and nine. Maybe we'll get Don's wish with a 47-yard field goal attempt. We shall see. All right. At what point do they wave the right flag for Ernsberger? <laughs> that time Sullivan Ashcraft introduced himself. <laughs> yeah. Rudely, I might add. Yeah, yeah. Now here it is, 47. Yep. You no know, music comes out. Ernsberger will spot it at the Bell Fountain. 37 yard line. So this will be a 47 yard try. The ball is put down. The kick is up. The kick has enough distance, and the kick is good. Music knocks it through from 47 yards to Drick Randall a little closer. Take a break. Four minutes to go in the first half. They'll found seven. Granville six after a couple of field goals this quarter for the Blue Aces. Back with more after this. Derek Wayne of Urbana wants to congratulate the great season in making it to the playoffs. Shout out for Ray. Let's bring home another win. Go Hill Climbers. Derek Wayne and Urbana will see you in the spring. If you are experiencing a poor flush and or drain backup, call Bobcat Multiworks now and have your septic system pumped. While they are doing that, they will also inspect your system, hopefully preventing a large replacement fee. Call today for more information, 585-9904. Back at Granville High, Big Lou is here with Gary and the Peak of Ohio TV.com crew. This game also on 107.3 The Drive. This kickoff presented by... Dairy Queen of Bell Fountain. The return man makes the catch at his 26 up the sidelines as Harper Scott. And he's rumbling forward all the way to the 39. A different kick that time by Granville. Instead of kicking it deep, they try to just pop it up on their side of the field. And Harper Scott, with a good heady play, made the catch and returned it for about 13 yards. And now Bell Fountain's got some field position. Don, as they'll start this series, well, right at their own 40. Return of 14 yards. I'm really impressed by the Bell Fountain defense. They've held Ernsberger to 6 of 15 passing for only 42 yards. Really good job by the Bell Fountain defense. Now they got some field position. Let's see if they can do something with it. Chiefs lead at 7 to 6, 3.55 to go before halftime. Wing to the left for St. Clair. Chiefs need to answer. They haven't done much the last couple of series. Pass out in the flat, caught by Near. Look at a reverse field, jitterbugging forward, and then finally gang tackled around the 43. Gain of about three, second and seven. Chiefs like that horizontal passing game. That is their running game at times tonight. The winner moves on to week two against Granville or Miami Trace. Chiefs lead Granville seven to six. Winner moves on to Jackson or Miami Trace, I should say. Yeah, most, this, most likely Jackson. This field position gives Coach Kennedy a little bit more uh, leeway to do a few different things maybe with the offense, maybe a little bit longer routes, uh, allowing St. Clair to throw the ball downfield maybe. Play clock at 10. St. Clair looking at a three-man front by Granville. Put a man in motion, that's Hayden Mance. And flag thrown. It's gonna be motion on Bell Fountain. Oh, I bet. What, what for though? I mean, Mance just no, goes in motion from right to no, left. No, the, the, the guard lifted up. 
Oh, well, yeah, that'll do it then. Yep. Well, Fountain, once again, you know. Behind the sticks. Behind the sticks with these penalties. Second and 13. Like to get this first down. Then I think if they, if they can do that, then I think Belfound starts attacking with some deep passes because of the field position. So, well, second and 12 for the Chiefs at their own 38. They got to get right to midfield. 7 6, Belfound leads at 2.45 to go in the half. They no. just did it again. I don't know what's going on here, but it's the same thing. They put man's in motion, the tackle raises up. Call That's something different. <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> yeah, that's called on the offensive tackle. It's the same exact thing that they just did the play before that. Yeah, yeah. and that's obviously not the play. So instead of a second and seven, it's now second and 17. And they'll find that a big offensive holding one series ago. Got to clean it up a little bit here. They need to play in their passing game. They might run though. Last series in this situation, they ran the ball. And they'll do it again. Near gets the give. Near tries to go forward and got a little bit to the 37. Gain of about four. Yeah, the down and distance has just really hurt Bell Fountain outside of that first drive. They've been playing behind the sticks because of, you know, penalties and really just kind of, you know, takes the playbook from, you know, maybe 40, 50 different play options to about five. Third and 13. Chiefs are at their own. 37, they got to get the midfield. Outbound seven, Granville six. Play clock down to 10, near in motion, right towards us. Chiefs want to have a double move. They look to throw to near, downfield. Near goes up for the ball, and it's incomplete. Right around uh, Granville, 26 yard line. Pretty good coverage. I'm not sure the double move really that time fooled the safety for Granville Eckenrode, who's also their punt returner, so he'll drop back to await this punt from C.J. Wilson. 1.39 to go before halftime. Belfound in front, 7-6, to six, but they need to keep it right that way. Belfound will get the football to start the second half, but they have not done much offensively the last couple of series. That time they had field position but did nothing with it. Wilson standing at his... 22-yard line, waiting for the snap from Brody Boy. It's a high one. Wilson goes up and gets it. Then Wilson gets away a very high punt. Not deep, though. And fair catch called for by Eckenrode. He won't be able to get up to the ball, and it's touched up by Brody Boy at the Granville 36-yard line. So not a real deep punt, but a very high punt and no return. And Buffalo's defense needs to stand tall again. Yeah, it's been really kind of a strange game in the fact that uh, Bell Fountain looked really impressive on that opening 95-yard drive, and since then, uh, someone took the keys out of the ignition. Yeah. They have had no rhythm, though. Penalties. Yeah, and yeah, you hit the nail on the head right there. It's hard, it's hard when you're calling two, second and 20, second and 25 plays. Chiefs defense now in a four-man look. Ernsberger in shotgun with Tchaikovsky to his right. They put Eckenrode in motion right to left. Ernsberger wants to pass. Has pressure coming. Throws towards the sidelines. And it's caught by Eckenrode down the left sideline. He making it for a touchdown. 10-5. And he gets into the end zone. Lost the football, but he only crossed the plane. And Randall gets their first lead of the night. Kalen Orton really had good coverage. I think maybe he, he actually tipped the ball to Eckenrode. And Randall goes in front on a 64-yard pass play, just a go route up the left sideline from Ernsberger to Akinro. But I think the Chiefs deflected the ball. Nonetheless, it goes for a touchdown. Yeah, I couldn't tell if he deflected or if he just jumped too early. Either way, that's a big play. Second week in a row, Buffon's hit by a big play towards the end of the half. Looks like Randall maybe will go for two. They will. The ball's loose, and the two-point play fails. A strange formation. A bunch to the left, a bunch to the right. Not your normal five down lineman. The two point play fails, but Granville leads both on 12 7 with 119 to go in the half. Come back with more after this on 1073 The Drive and peakofohiotv.com. As a number one financial institution, we stack the deck in your favor. 
Fewer fees, more frees. Quest Federal Credit Union puts our owners in a position to succeed by offering more opportunities to save, yet others choose to ding you for every service. Quest Federal Credit Union, member owned since 1969. Bank better. Quest Federal Credit Union, explore the possibilities. NCUA insured, membership eligibility required, equal opportunity limit. Stop by Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken for a chicken sandwich combo at a great price. With a premium all-white meat chicken breast and creamy Chipotle ranch all on a brioche bun, no other chicken sandwich can compare. Get the chicken sandwich combo at a great price, only at Lee's. Granville back to kick it off. Noah Music has it teed up at his 40. Kicks it. Deeper this time, Riley Near goes up and makes the catch at the nine. Near looking to get upfield, looking for a block. Near still on his feet, then cut down around the 32-yard line. Pretty good return. Chiefs have decent field position. Two plays ago, though, Granville was able to pop a Harvey Wholesaler's long-distance connection. A 64-yard pass play from Ernsberger to Eckenrode up the left sideline. Caitlin Organ actually had pretty good coverage. And Harvey Wholesaler's is our way to connect you in style for your next long distance connection for your next trip go in style with a fifth wheel travel trailer or motor home from RV wholesalers in Lakeview Chiefs need to answer they have it at their 34 so a return of 23 yards by near Chiefs trailing for the first time tonight 12-7 with 1.14 to go before halftime St. Clair wants to pass out on the right side caught by Wilson Wilson trying to work out of a tackle and he goes up to about the 41 yard line yeah, I thought on that uh, touchdown pass, Bill, that Oregon actually had a chance to pick it off, and I thought he would pick it off. I think he might have just jumped a little too soon. He, he did jump early. I thought maybe he deflected, and if not, it was a great catch by Eckenrode because his line of sight was really hampered. Now near in motion. St. Clair wants to pass, throws downfield, incomplete at around the Granville 40. He was, there were a lot of blue jerseys in coverage that time. Third and two, Chiefs need to find a way to move the sticks. 42 seconds to go before halftime. Neither team has used the timeout yet. Third and two for the Chiefs. Now Bell Fountain with all their timeouts left. I'd like to see them work the middle of the field here. It doesn't have to be deep passes no. quite yet. No, just a first down. It's going to be a run by Near moving forward, getting a push from his lineman. It's a first down. Here with a first down to the 48-yard line. Physical run by the little guy. Yeah, I mean, uh, he just kind of got in there, lifted his feet, and let the lineman push him down the field. Chiefs get seven yards. We'll take a timeout as Belfound calls timeout. 36 seconds to go before halftime. Granville 12, Belfound 7. More after this. High school football season is here. Padroni's Pizza in Bell Fountain is ready to feed your gang. They offer so much more than just delicious pizzas. If you're looking for something new, try their subs and salads. Pastas, too. They have something for everyone. Padroni's Pizza in Bell Fountain. Do you love the beautiful glow your skin gets from the sun? At Buckeye Washington, you can keep that glow all year round. You don't have to worry about the seasons changing. They have several beds available to help you achieve and keep the look you want. Check out Buckeye Washington and Hills Plaza. Back at Granville High, thanks to Josh Duvall, the athletic director for hosting us tonight. We are late in the second quarter. Here on 107 3 Drive and peakofohiotv.com. Big Lou is here. Gary Kaufman is here with Don Hensley on Bill Tipple. Thanks to Ty Avila, Xander Kuhn, and all the guys back in studio control. Chiefs Trail Granville 12 7. Bill Found just used their first time out. They have two remaining. 36 seconds to go before halftime. Chiefs need to make some hay right now. St. Clair in shotgun. What's the pass? Looking, looking, looking. Has time. Throws middle of the field. Caught by Wilson inside the 40. Stood up and brought down at the 36. There's that middle of the field that Don Hensley wanted spot on. Yeah, I just think that the, you know, the idea right now is to get somebody running through that space. Gain of 16, first down for the Chiefs at the Granville 36. They will not use a timeout. Game clock's down to 22. St. Clair wants to pass again, has time. Looking, looking, looking. Throws towards the left side, has Wilson there. Oh, and deflected at the last second. I don't think the defender ever turned around, just basically ran into the football and stopped the touchdown. 
Yeah, I mean, right there, I mean, it's it, it's tough to say this because, I mean, it's a high school receiver, but the play there would have been to stop and try to come back for the ball. At minimum, he gets the 15 yards. By waiting for it like that, he let the defensive back come yeah. and play the football. That's tough to do. I know what you're saying. But, I mean, but he just yeah, felt but, so open, I think, is what it was. Yeah, but he can see the guy closing on him. That's I mean, true. it's a chance for him to come back to the football. No doubt. Second and 10. I think instinctively you're you're just waiting for it to come to you. But, yeah, uh, Granville caught a break there. Second and 10. St. Clair wants to pass. That's time. Looking, looking, looking. Now looks to step up through sidelines. And the receiver pushed out of bounds around the 30. That is Reams. Knocked out by Mester on the near side. Game clock goes all the way down to nine. Yeah, I mean. Third and four, gain of six. Dare I say, I'm not even going to say it, Bill. I think you just need to go put, put a couple into the end zone here. <laughs> no deja vu. Not going to talk about it. Last week we were here. I know what he's saying. I don't think we'll see the same situation. No. Time for two plays. You can, you can do this a couple ways. Just get like a five-yarder, then go end zone, or go end zone twice. Third and four at the 30. St. Clair wants to pass. Has pressure coming, and he's knocked down. Let's see if the Chiefs call a timeout. They do with two seconds to go, and a well-timed blitz that time by Granville. They get St. Clair back to the 44-yard line, a loss of 14. Well done. That's really one of the few times Granville's brought middle pressure, and they got home for the sack. And yeah, they picked a good time to do it, too. Uh, right there, Buff Fountain with a little confidence moving the ball down the field. We'll take a timeout as well. Chiefs trailing 12-7. We're down to... Two seconds to go in the first half. Back with that final play after this. Nate Don's here from Don's Wealth Advisors. Because we take a long-term view of investing, we don't worry about inflation. We plan for it. At Don's Wealth Advisors, we believe that having a plan is the most effective way to invest for the long term. If you don't have a plan or you'd like a second opinion on the plan you have, call us at Don's Wealth Advisors, 592-0200. We've been right here in Ball Fountain for the long term since 1979. No cost, no obligation for that second opinion. Call 592-0200. Back at Granville, Chiefs need to work a little magic. Fourth and a long ways. Fourth at about 19. That's not really the point, though. It's all about the game clock. Game clock is down to two seconds to go in the first half. The Chiefs trail at 12-7. And it's fourth at about 19. But the Chiefs here are not going for the first down. They're going for the end zone. Yep. Cut it loose, Saint. Yep. And uh, St. Clair will. He drops back inside his own 50. Looks, throws down the left side into coverage. Deitch there. Deitch makes the catch, but he's knocked out of bounds on the near side at about the 10. And that's how the half ends. Good tackle by Grandel. They had him double covered. Sidelines also helped. And that's the end of the first half. Well, found struck first. But Grandel came back with two field goals and a long touchdown pass. And that's our first half here on WPKO HD2. Bell Fountain as Granville leads it at the half, 12-7. Bell Fountain will get the ball to start the third quarter. Don, your thoughts on the, you know, the first half, what the coaches are thinking right now, what will be stressed at the half as Granville leads Bell Fountain, 12-7. It was a good half. I mean, entertaining half of football, I think, that Bell Fountain, you know, gets the opening kick. They're, they're obviously talking about, see, we can move the ball a little bit better if we get some field position, got to clean up the penalties. I think defensively, Bell Fountain's played well. Uh, you know, the, the one touchdown there is on a little bit of a gift because I think the demons are back, may have jumped a little too soon, and you know, the ball was able to get to the wide receiver for the touchdown. But I thought outside of that one play, Bell Fountain's defense kind of had, you know, Ensberger rattled a little bit. But, uh, you know, that's football, and they're down 12-7. They're going to go have, in and regroup here. But I think, uh, you know, Coach Kennedy, they were able to move the ball. Uh, they're going to, you know, they're, they're at the half with over 200 yards of offense. Um, I don't think it's, you know, a lot of it came on that first drive, but I think that they feel pretty comfortable with what they can do. I think field position hurt them, though, in the first half. Too many penalties in the second quarter. And Granville also took advantage of their kicking game because, uh, you know, normal high school teams maybe n would not have those field goals go in. But yeah. have to go for it. Yeah, I mean, uh, you know, it's part of the game. And the 47-yarder, though, in high school. Um, unusual. Yeah, that's unusual. It doesn't usually happen in uh, Especially when it's cold outside, that kid's got a nice, nice leg, and uh, he, you know, he's got him on. He's got him in the lead right now. 
Tonight's game also brought to you in part by a couple of our specialty sponsors as we get ready to watch and listen to the Bell Fountain High School Marching Band. Granville leads Bell Fountain at the half 12-7. Tonight's game brought to you by Bell Fountain's Comfort Inn. Click on the Comfort Inn at peakofohio.com for radio listener-only savings on room rates. Also, thanks to Iron City Sports Bar on South Main of Bell Fountain, home of Logan County's best wings, burgers, and steaks. Go back to studio control here a little bit later, but first we're going to watch the bands as it's the Belfound High School Marching Band and the Granville Blue Aces Band as well. Halftime tonight here on 107.3 The Drive and peakofohiotv.com. Granville leads Belfound 12-7. Now we'll go out to the bands. Find your creative self at Cracked Pot Studio. Try a hand-built class. It's amazing what can be created from a hunk of clay. No need to be an expert. We'll teach you. Every Wednesday, we're open for paint your own. Great pieces for sale that you paint, we fire, and you have your own masterpiece to take home. Just looking for unique gifts? Our community potters have their own store with one-of-a-kind pieces for sale. Check out our Facebook page or CrackedPotStudio.com. Come see us soon. You'll be so glad you did. Have you been to Fazoli's in Bell Fountain for lunch lately? They have delicious lunch specials every day till 4 p.m. for only $6.99, and that even includes a drink. Here's a couple to choose from. Spaghetti with marinara, fettuccine alfredo, a slice of pizza, and more. Even small house salad. You can even upgrade to premium favorites like chicken fettuccine alfredo or spaghetti with meatballs. Upgrades are only a buck more. Great food, great price at Fazoli's in Bell Fountain. Are you penalized because your bank's head coach is located out of town? At the People Savings Bank, our head coach is right here in your hometown to help you meet your goals. Come score a touchdown with the People Savings Bank. Member FDIC and Equal Housing Lender.
you struggling to keep up? Like many, you may feel your budget has been stretched to its limit. Are you having difficulties due to poor credit? Let Plus Federal Credit Union help you find your financial fitness. Schedule an appointment today to go over budgeting, credit score restoration, and personal finance. Plus Federal Credit Union, explore the possibilities. And see where you should and you should have a good repair, equal opportunity. Fettuccine Alfredo, a slice of pizza, and more. Even small house salad. You can even upgrade to premium favorites like chicken fettuccine Alfredo or spaghetti with meatballs. Upgrades are only a buck more. Great food, great price at Fazoli's in Bell Fountain. Find your creative self at Cracked Pot Studio. Try a hand-build class. It's amazing what can be created from a hunk of clay. No need to be an expert. We'll teach you. Every Wednesday, we're open for paint your own. Great pieces for sale that you paint, we fire, and you have your own masterpiece to take home. Just looking for unique gifts? Our community potters have their own store with one-of-a-kind pieces for sale. Check out our Facebook page or crackpotstudio.com. Come see us soon. You'll be so glad you did. Stop by Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken for our 10-piece strips meal at a great price. With 10 of our premium strips, two large sides, five fluffy biscuits, and three sauces, this is dippable chicken done right. Get the 10-piece strips meal at a terrific price, only at Lee's. Hi, it's Liz at Bell Fountain's Comfort Inn. Our Fountain Lounge is Bell Fountain's fun night spot. And right now, we're looking for an experienced bartender who will enjoy working in our fun atmosphere. If you like people, you'll love working at Comfort Inn. Apply in person or call 599-5555. Bartenders at the Comfort Inn earn more than $9 an hour, and that's plus tips. If you're an experienced mixologist, check out the Fountain Lounge experience. Apply in person at the Comfort Inn where 68 meets 33 or call during business hours at 599 <laughs> That's why they got their name. It's like, I think I can feel that down here. I'm trying to stay away. That's why I'm back in. Uma Thurman. 
Because a good plan has many of your answers built in. If you don't have a plan, please consider talking to someone who can help you design one. Dodd's Wealth Advisors. Answers today. Peace of mind tomorrow. Hi, this is Matt Brown, owner of Iron City Sports Bar. Home of the best wings, burgers, and steaks in Logan County since 2017. My staff and I would like to wish the best of luck to the Bell Fountain High School football team, cheerleading staff, and coaching staff as they take on Granville this week in playoffs. Dine in with us before the game, order carry out, or choose delivery by DoorDash. More information can be found at www.ironcitysportsbar.com. Here. Test one, two, one. Two. Back here at Granville High School. Thanks to Josh Duvall for hosting us tonight on 1073 The Drive and peakofohiotv.com. I'm Bill Tabor, Don Hensley. Thanks to all of our listeners and viewers tonight. The opening round of the Division Three Region 11 playoffs. It's a good one. Granville leads Bell Fountain at the half, 12 7. The Chiefs scored on their opening. Possession. They went 95 yards. Bell Fountain did not have much field position. They had a little bit late in the second quarter on two drives. Couldn't do much with it. Granville's defense has gotten better as the game has gone on. And Granville's had some great field position. They made really one big play. A 64-yard touchdown pass from Ernsberger to Eckenrod down the left sideline. Then they made two kicks. Noah Music, their outstanding kicker, hit a 32-yarder. He also had a 47-yarder, and that's that's really it. The Chiefs touchdown pass, a 22-yarder from Tavian St. Clair to C.J. Wilson. Third quarter will be huge. Bell found offense needs to put something together. One thing Don and I talk about for each game is the flow and maybe how many points. Mm, I don't know, maybe 20, 25 points is going to win this game. Chiefs are going to have to score, I would think, at least a couple touchdowns this second half. Yeah, I mean... Uh... You know, they need to get the first one first and then see see what happens from there. That first drive is going to be key coming out of the half here. You know, the, on the stat sheet, it's pretty even half. Bell Fountain had 187 yards of total offense. They rushed 10 times for 10 yards. Uh, Near had 40 yards rushing, but um, St. Clair had lost 30. So uh, Sacks. In sacks, yeah. So yeah. 10, 10 carries for 10 yards, and then uh, Bell Fountain was 13-19 and 19 passing for 177 yards for 187 total. Granville, 12 carries for 66 yards, and their passing game, 7 of 16 for 106, with 64 coming on that uh, touchdown play. Chiefs have not run the ball badly. I know you say 10 carries for 10 yards, but Nier really had, uh, I believe, 8 carries for 40. Is that correct? Yeah, I mean, they're not going to, you know, with, with Nier back there, they're not looking, you know, necessarily to uh, pound the ball between the tackles, but, you know, they just got to run enough to keep the Granville defense honest. I think one of the big things in the second half, Belfont's got to look to move the ball through the air across the middle of the field. We saw some success with that there on that last drive, throwing the ball across the middle, and I think they got to do that because um, the, the Granville defense, they're, ba they're bailing out and, um, you know, looking to cover those outside the hashes, and I think between the hash marks is open. We could not find a score. I looked it up at halftime of Jackson versus uh, Miami Trace because the winner gets Jackson or Miami Trace. Granville doing some... Uh, Warm-ups as we get ready for the second half. The Chiefs are huddled to our left. They're ready to go. The Chiefs without Chris Fogan tonight. He played early in the London game. The first couple plays then was out with uh, an ankle injury. So they'll have to you know, find a way without him and his rushing attack tonight. So it will be pass heavy. We saw Hayden Manns leave in the first quarter, but he came back in and looked, looked fine. I think the Belfound defense has played pretty well. And the quarterback for Granville, a senior, good passer, Kind of the prototypical quarterback, tall, long guy, about six foot four, but he is taking a beating. I wonder if maybe the Chiefs can get a turnover uh, sometime in this third quarter. Neither team has turned the ball over. Granville will kick it away. 
to the Chiefs. Weather is fine. Nice night for late October, really. No breeze. Temperature is going down. I would say now we're probably in the upper 40s. It was a lot warmer when Lou had the windows closed, but now that he's got the windows open, I'd say it's dropped about 30 degrees in here. I noticed the window in front of him, those closed, so uh, in order to get the crowd noise, he's opened the one in front of me. Well, we, what he's got is the camera to your, to your right is for the scoreboard, but yeah, you're, you're taking one for the team right now. I am. Yeah, that's the kind of player I am. <laughs> so Granville will kick it away. Kickoff brought to you by Dairy Queen of Bell Fountain. Quarter by quarter sponsors, Roof and Benchick Law. Roof and Benchick Law is in Kenton and our RV Wholesalers Long Distance Connection. We have one actually right before half, a pass play of 37 yards from St. Clair to Dyche, but that was the final play of the half. And a long Distance Connection thanks to RV Wholesalers in Lakeview. Granville ready to kick it away as we begin the third quarter here on 107.3 The Drive and peakofohiotv.com. Music puts his right foot into it. It's a pretty good kick. Near will catch it at the 7. Looking for a seam. Near cuts it up inside, 25, 30, 35, still on his feet. Reverses field and cut down at the 43. Good return by Riley Near. That's what he can do. He's good in the open field. Caught that ball around his 8 and returned it to his 43. A return of 35 yards. That is an RV wholesaler's long distance connection. And the Chiefs have good field position. Trailing 12-7 as the second half is just underway tonight on 107.3 The Drive in Peak of Ohio, TV.com. And that's the way to open the half right there. Give a little excitement, get some field position. Let's go. Chiefs need a score. Ring to the left is Landon Kelly. Three receivers to the right side. Deitch at the bottom by himself. St. Clair wants to throw out on the right. Caught by Wilson. Gets a block. Wilson upfield. And he will be spilled over the 50 to the Granville side around the 47 is right by a first down. Got a good block right on the perimeter. I'm not sure which other receiver it was, but they really sprung him, and it's a first down for the Chiefs. Gain of 10. Nice little quick out. Uh, wide receiver screen. Wilson busy tonight. That's his seventh catch. First and 10 for the Chiefs at the Granville 47. Granville in front 12-7 as we begin the third quarter. St. Clair with Kind of a power look, gives it off to Near, who gets a little bit of a block. They had two wings, one of them Hayden Manns. They ran behind Manns over the right side and got maybe four. So that's a different look. So you're really giving Near seven blockers in that set. Yeah, and you know, just right, right there, Near just straight ahead power, picking up three. Third down, three yards is so important there. Second and seven is a lot different than second and ten. Same thing here. I think it's Manns and Ashcraft that are the wings. And here comes a pass over to Reams. Nice a square shot. and a slant caught at the Granville 37. He had to go down to his knee to make the catch. I don't think it's a first down. Just inside the 38, actually. Third and about a foot. Nice little slant route there by Reams, uh, keeping himself between the defender. Nice job. So third and one. Chiefs need to convert. Trailing at 12-7 here at Granville. St. Clair in shotgun. The offense is set. To give to Near, Near hit in the backfield. He spins forward. He's got the first down. Alex caught Dillon there at right guard, blocking down the field. I don't know. That spot is not a good spot. Oh, I think he's got it. But well, no, they, no, he doesn't. It's third. It's going to be fourth down. Well, I don't like the spot at all. How about you? Are I you think that that's a tough spot. This is where I like for St. Clair just to get under center. I mean, he's six foot whatever four, four, four. I mean, he yeah. can lean forward and get the first down. They won't, though. They'll go shotgun. Fourth and one. He did not get the first down. Two wings for Near to work with. Randall now and three down linemen, but they've got a bunch of people creeping up into the box. Play clock is at four. St. Clair is going to actually pass. Looking for Manns. Looking throws out that way. Caught by the big guy inside the 30, and a burst forward down the right sideline inside the 25 to the 21. Attaboy, Jake Kennedy. Great call right there. <laughs> They fake the give to Near. St. Clair rolls right and hits his wingman, turn receiver, Hayden Manns for a big one. Gain of 16 down to the 21. Yeah, I don't think anybody was expecting that on uh, fourth and one. Oh, nice I, play call, though. I certainly was not. I like I like how St. Clair is throwing to Manns. He's almost like just guiding a little lob just on there, it. just making sure the big fella can get his hands around it. Way of a stoppage. 
Not sure if somebody called timeout. Be a player down? I don't see anybody down though. Do you, Don? They got they have on the scoreboard. It looks like they have Bell Fountain with only one timeout left. No, that's from the first half. I'm not sure what the stoppage is for. I know it's not to make sure they're hydrated because it's freezing right here. <laughs> <laughs> well, back to live action. No timeouts by either team. Everybody seems to be healthy for the Chiefs. First and 10 at the Granville, 21. Game clock is at 9.18 to go in the third quarter. Ball found down 12-7. It's near, looking to bounce it outside. Gets a seam inside the 15, gets a push, and finally brought down around the 11. That's how you run on first down. How about the Chiefs show it, lining up in double wing and yeah, smashing it at him? And, and, and Caudell right now playing offensive guard. I'm pretty sure he just blocked his guy into the seats. <laughs> I saw it. He did. Second, second and one for the Chiefs at the Granville 12-yard line. Oh, here, I know you, you, you uh, like many of us in pressure, like to do play calling. Would you run again? I'd, yeah, I mean, if you get nine yards, I would. Yeah, I would, too. Second and one. To me, this is a running play. Of course, Hayden Manns has become the new uh, Tony Gonzalez there, tight end. So. Yeah. Second and one, St. Clair. Gives it to Deer, who's hit the backfield. And then a flag thrown by the, by the official. Yeah, see right there, the thing I don't like about that is trying to get wide when you're, when you're running the ball up the middle like you are. If you're going to run it, keep going north and south. Well, they tried to run wide left. And that's a spot penalty, so offensive holding. That's been the bugaboo penalty for the Chiefs tonight. Yeah, it ends up being a 15-yarder because, once again, this, this one was, this holding was five yards in the backfield. Yeah. These holding calls have just killed Bell Fountain two weeks in a row now. Mm -hmm. Second and, oh boy. Well, it was second and one a play ago in the offensive holding in the backfield. Now it's second and about 18. Ball's at the Granville 29. The Chiefs need to get to the 11. So second and 18. Bell found down 12-7. St. Clair still with the wing off to his right. The running back is near. Now we'll look over to the sideline. This is a critical possession for Balfound. They've got the momentum. They need to cash it in with a touchdown. St. Clair wants to pass. Has time. Plenty of time. Throws downfield to the end zone. Overshoots everybody, and it's incomplete. Trying to hit Reams up the right side inside the five and around the four. But he overshot Reams and both defenders. That was into... Uh, a bunch of blue jerseys, double coverage on Reams, and now it's third and 18. Yeah, I mean, right here I'd like to, you know, they're going to soften this up a little bit, so mm -hmm. right here is not a bad time to get that wide receiver screen, pick up 10 yards. You're in four-down territory. And Granville playing way off, and why wouldn't you? Third and 18. Chiefs need to get to the Granville 11 to move the sticks. St. Clair wants the pass. Throws caught by his receiver, Wilson. Looks to work out of a couple of tackles. And brought down, good team defense at about the 22. Well, we got about seven. It will be fourth and 11 for the Chiefs. Again, that holding penalty may be a drive killer. We'll see what this fourth down play has in store. Yeah, it just it seems like in the last couple weeks, that's really kind of bitten the Chiefs. You know, they've been on big drives, and they get an untimely penalty that puts them behind the sticks. It's been tough to overcome. Fourth and 11, the Granville stands right below us, come to life. Chiefs down 12-7, midway through the third, qu third quarter. St. Clair rolls left, looking, 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 looking. Still looking, has pressure coming, throws the ball towards the goal line, and it's incomplete. And Granville takes over on downs. We do have a penalty flag, go back at the 25-yard line. It's going to be a chop block on the Chiefs, and that's why the young man was down. I just don't understand rolling a right-handed quarterback on a, on a fourth and 11 play out to the left. It just, it's, it, it's just a tough throw to make. And Rambo will take over. The penalty was a chop block as Don called. That penalty, well, I guess it would have been a big pass play. It would have nullified it, but really didn't change things here. The incompletion and the ball found defense will have to stand tall again. Chiefs trailing at 12-7. They had a second and one at the Granville 12, and they're turned away 
because of the holding penalty. Yeah, I just don't, uh, I, I think on that, if you wanted to flood the zone like that, maybe rolling right, uh, where he's got a little bit of better of a chance to get his shoulder square to the line of scrimmage and throw the football. First down for Granville. They will start this drive at their 22-yard line. So they've got a long field to work with. 7-12 to go in the third. Chiefs trail at 12-7. Chiefs the four-man front. Ernsberger in shotgun. Hands it off to his running back who looks for a seam and Caudill makes a sure tackle. Tchaikovsky wow. got maybe three, second and five. Boy, oh, Caudill closed that quick. That looked like he had an opening there to maybe pick up 10 yards and uh, Alex Caudell with him. One of the better running linebackers you're going to find at his size. Just a nice play right there. Second and seven, gain of three. Chiefs have hit Ernsberger. See if they can come up with a turnover. Granville's first possession of this half. Takes a deep drop. Looking, looking, looking. Throws downfield. Ball deflected. Oh, and it's picked off. What a play. Picked off by Caden Stamp at the Granville 43. First turnover of the game. And the ball got deflected up in the air, and Snap just never gave up. Then a flag thrown. Clear across the way, maybe too much celebration. It's probably going to be a sideline warning on the Chiefs, I would say, because, you know, in today's game, you can't really celebrate. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's a high school football game. There would be no celebration. Yep. Well, yeah. the sideline warning on the Chiefs, so it's no penalty yardage. What a play by the sophomore, Caden Snap, right by the Granville bench, the near side. Saw the deflection, went airborne, caught it, and of course came down on his knee, so the play was dead, but the Chiefs have great field position at the Granville 43. Good old-fashioned tip drill right there. Yep. Need a touchdown. Need a touchdown. They got the momentum. Yeah, and I, I think Bill Fountain's defense feels confident they can play with Granville. They just need to get in the lead here. First and ten for the Chiefs at the... Granville 43, St. Clair, throws it to Nero. Maybe a razzle-dazzle. He's a backup quarterback, throws downfield into coverage, We've and a flag thrown. There it is, two flags thrown, incomplete pass at the Granville 10. It was the halfback pass. Nero is the backup quarterback. They tried a deep pass to Wilson, and it's incomplete at the Granville 10, but this should be a defensive penalty, which is not a bad penalty instead of giving up the touchdown. See, right, right there, right there is what we were talking about in that first half. There, Wilson kind of fights back for the ball and gets and draws the penalty. That's 15 yards. The halfback pass doesn't cash in for a touchdown, but it is a first down. Defensive pass interference on Granville. Jake Kennedy going to the bag of tricks. You like it? Yeah, yeah, I like it. I mean, <laughs> you know, why not? It's playoff time. It's one and done. Yeah, that's surviving advance for but, sure. But uh, that was a nice job of Wilson learning something from that play in the first half. There he co there he comes back for the ball, fights through, gets the gets the flag. Chiefs for the first and ten at the Granville 28. Chiefs still tra still trail at 12-7, 6:26 to go in the third. It's near again, looking to run left, hit, not much there. Chikowski yeah, came up and made the play, and near took a a hard tackle from one of the defensive tackles that landed on him. Yeah, they're struggling to run the ball uh, outside the tackles, and Near is now shaken up, which is really going to put the Chiefs in a tough situation. Well, the biggest defender, Nick Purdy, just landed on him, 6'3", 260 pounds, rode him down on his back and landed on him. So it's all that weight coming down, and now Near is in a squat position. Second and six. Yeah, the big change right now in these last few plays is that, uh, you know, Granville's offensive line has kept the pocket clean. They have kept it pretty clean. Second and six right at midfield. Granville in front, 12-7. Play pass. Ball over the middle of the defense. Caught by Eckenrode. He scoots forward down to about the 22. Had a step on Caden Snap. Good ball by Ernsberger. Put it right on him. And another big game. Gain of 28 yards. That's another RV Wholesalers long distance connection. RV Wholesalers in Lakeview. What a pass by Ernsberger. I think maybe his best ball of the night. That took touch.
Caden Snap will come out. And Riley Near comes in at corner, and the Chieftain defense needs to make a stand. Yeah, that was uh, a couple back-to-back -back plays there that they've uh, found something they like with uh, Eckenrode. Eckenrode. Built like a typical punt returner. Short guy, but shifty. Jankowski off to the left. Pass out in the flat. Caught by the receiver. Slips through a couple of tackles and takes it down to about the nine. Randall knocking on the door. They score here. It's going to be very, very difficult for the Chiefs. That, game, that play went for 13 yards. Caught by Kyle Kirby, who's a freshman receiver. Yeah, they've really flipped the momentum here. Uh, you know, Bell Fountain getting the ball inside the 30 twice and, not, and coming away with zero points. Uh, gave Granville a little momentum for this drive. And their passing game has come to life. Uh, the pass protection got four for four on his last four passes for and, about 63 yards. And, and just the pass protection is much better on this series. Actually, the best pass protection he's had all night. Tchaikovsky off to the left of Ernsberger. Tchaikovsky gets the give, break it through a couple of tackles, then brought down. They actually lost about half a yard. Second and goal from the 10. We're late in the third quarter, 40 seconds to go in the third, and Granville leads both on 12-7. I can't really see that into the field, so I'm just going to let, you, let yeah. you go from there, Bill. Second and ten. Randall just looks over at their coaches for the signal. Play clock at 18. Game clock at 20, so they'll have to run another play. Do you guess run or pass? Second and goal to ten. I think they'll throw here. Ernsberger wants to pass. Looking, looking. Throws for Barrasso. And Barrasso... Touchdown. Makes the touchdown catch. Ran Oregon off about two yards deep into the end zone, then came back for that back shoulder fade, and Ernsberger put it right on him, just inside the left pylon, and now Granville takes a two-score lead as they lead both on 18-7 with two seconds to go in the third quarter. And Granville will go for two. Well... Maybe not. Now they'll get in formation to go for the one with music, their outside backer. Ball is put down by Ernsberger. The kick is up and the kick is good. Point after touchdown thanks to Thistle floor covering. And, and we will keep it right here late in the third quarter. As Granville now leads it 19 to 7. Oh, what a strange quarter, Don. 10 yard touchdown pass from Ernsberger to Barrasso. Just audio, Lou? Yeah, I got so many people texting me. Yeah. Is the audio on? Well, we'd have to hook up this dongle thing.
Guys, um, testing one two one two one two one two one two. Guys, text me if you can hear me. Just send me a text. Says hello, 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 hello. I'm ready if you are, but you got to let me know when we're on. I'm not getting any texts. Right, if you give me a text message, a text. I'm ready. I just can't tell that I'm on. I'm not seeing any anything here. seeing where I'm on. Can somebody text me? There we go. Somebody text me. Hello, hello, hello. Text me. Text me. Shoot me a text on the Skype. Give me a countdown and we're ready to go. We're ready. texting me. Nobody is texting me. 62 yard touchdown run, Don. Mm -hmm. 62 I yards. Yep. Nobody is texting me. There we go. Now text me, text me, text me. Oh, good evening. Okay, let me know when we're on. I see you. Hello. Hello. You got my text? Somebody text me. Hello, 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 hello. Oh. Hello, this is Bill. Hello, 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 hello. Yes, Ty. Hello, 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 hello. Do you have your um, Nighthawk thing? Yes. Okay. Hello, 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 hello. Somebody text me. I'm here, I'm here, I'm here. I'm here. I'm here. Hello, 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 hello. Hello, hello. 
Hello, 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 hello. Hello, 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 hello. Hello, 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 hello. Hello. Big play here, baby. Come on now. Come on, tune up the pressure a little bit, fights. Shit, if I'm not gonna call it, I'm, I'm cheerleading now. Come on, get home. Shanked it.
gone. All right, guys. Calling you right now. Calling you right now. Got you. Okay, get us, let us know we're on. Just text us and say go. Gotcha. I got it. Close. I'd say in the next 10, 15 seconds. Starting for the delay, Riley Neer gets the give, going to the right side, and Summer Salt's down to about the Granville 26 when we were gone. There was some excitement. Second and 20 a few minutes ago, and Riley Neer popped a 62-yard touchdown run, one of our RV wholesalers' long-distance connections. That drew the Chiefs within 19-14 after the Alex Crable extra point. The Chiefs kick off. They stopped Granville after Granville got a first down, and Elbow Fountain is in business after a short Granville punt. For Third and six for the Chiefs at the Granville 26. 540 to go in the game. The Chiefs trail it 1914 here on WPKO HD2 Bell Fountain. St. Clair wants the pass. Throws. Caught by Wilson, who's tackled right away. No reams ever. It's, it's incomplete. incomplete. I thought he had it on the left side by the Bell Fountain bench. Incomplete at the 19-yard line. Keeps it back, ripped it out of his hands. Yeah, good play. It, it was going to be a first down. Well, here's the play of the game, Don. I mean, there will be some more moments like this potentially as we go down the stretch here. 5.30 to go in the game. The Chiefs are down. Down 19-14. Fourth and six. They need to get to the Granville 21. Play clock is at five. St. Clair with a deep drop. Looking, looking, looking. Still looking. He throws towards the end zone. Has an AM there. It's near. It's incomplete. That's just been the problem for Belfont all night, Bill. Three trips now inside the 30 with nothing to come away with. Yeah, because Near's touchdown when we were off was a 62 yarder. They still have time. Game clock's at 523 to go in the football game. The Chiefs trail it 1914. Both teams have all their timeouts, so three timeouts each. Granville will start at their own 26-yard line. Got to get another stop. Yep, I have to do that. Maybe get a turnover. Tchaikovsky gets the give, looks for a seam, not much there. Eli Moore, they're also there. Was Sullivan Ashcraft. Second and 10. Game clock is down to 5 10 to go in the game. Bell Fountain really must get a three and out here. And it's wise for Granville to run it, but that's, that's not really what they do. But from a game management standpoint, that's what they want to do. Chiefs trail at 19-14 with 4.45 to go in the game. Ernsberger rolls, has pressure coming, throws downfield, and it's incomplete. Carter Snap was kind of turned around. They tried to hit the freshman receiver Kirby at the Granville 40, incomplete, and now that sets up a huge third and 10, and it also stops the game clock. They've gone after Carter Snap a little bit here in the second half, Bill. 4.37 to go. In the game, Chiefs trail it 19-14. I'm guessing they're going for the receiver that's the bottom of the set, Dante Barrasso, guarded by Keelan Oregon. Oregon's done a nice job of taking him away, though, most of the game. Mm -hmm. 
Herzberger wants to pass. Looking, looking, looking. Throws downfield into double coverage, and it's incomplete. Good coverage by Carter Snap in Oregon. Some of the Granville fans thought maybe pass interference, but no way. A great double team downfield around the Bell Found 40. Herzberger took a shot. It's fourth and 10, and here comes the Granville punt team. Wow. That's a big stop, and they should get good field position. Should be on. Nobody can hear it. Um, through this board. Yeah, it's connected the right way. Now can you hear us? Test, 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 test. Test, 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 test. Any luck, any luck, any luck, any luck, any luck. You should be able to hear us. Should be able to hear us. Should be able to hear us. Any luck. They said got you when we were like in getting in queue. Testing one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two. Test, 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 test. Seven to the 25, Don, so 38 yards, 38. Testing one, two, one, two, and two, and two, and two. How do we not have you? How do we not have us? Can you call in on your cell or something? I don't think that's the board. anymore. I could call Xander. Test one, two, and two, and two, and two. One, two, and two, and two, and two, and two. Somebody called timeout. Injury. <laughs> oh. Pardon me? You're on? All right. We're here at School for the technical difficulties tonight. As we're late in the fourth quarter, 4.14 to go in the fourth quarter. And uh, the Chiefs trail Granville, 19. Huge second half running the football. And uh, the Chiefs, first of 10, the Granville. 25 yard, 48 yard run. So in this half, in this quarter, here had a 30, uh, 62 yard run and a 38 yard run. We're here at Granville High School. We're going to hit She's trying to make some hay here out of first of 10 at the Granville 25 St. Clair's class. Denzo has an in there. Right in the Let's go, Chief! Touchdown pass from St. Clair to Weems. What a touchdown pass down. Yeah, I mean, uh, you know, it's been a wild quarter and a half here. Chiefs will go for two. As they just hit that 25 yard touchdown pass. And, uh, Go for a two point conversion here. Right, looking, looking, looking. Not going back the other way, and it's incomplete. Three to go in the game. The Chiefs leading it 20 to 19. What a fourth quarter, Don. Yeah, it's been an incredible fourth quarter. Riley Near, when we uh, started having. When we started having some technical difficulties, uh, he was uh, he had 45 yards rushing. Since then, he's now carried 17 times for 162 yards. Kickoff brought to my Gary, head of all balance this quarter. Elder Gordon brought to my 
Yeah, it's, uh, now it's up to the Bell Fountain defense. We know that Granville's got a kicker that can uh, hit from long distance. Belfound on special teams. Belfound obviously has a lot of emotion right now. And they looked at Milwaukee and had a little technical break away because it was second and 20 when Neer popped his, uh, his touchdown. Yeah, Neer's done an unbelievable job here in the last couple series. 19 carries, 162 yards. He's had a run of 62 and 38. Uh, 339 left in the game and uh, this is obviously the, the season right here for the Chiefs is can their defense keep Danville really they got to keep them uh, outside the 35. Yeah for Granville yeah they're doing a lot better job. Bell Fountain trying to blanket their receivers uh, right there. Innsberger looking to get the ball out a lot quicker than he was in the first half and the second half here. Great play right there by Snap to drive him out of bounds. That was close. Third and ten. No foul playing with a lot of, lot of juice right now. Last time they put, this has been a heck of a game, Bill. Yeah. It's a blitz here? Yeah, I think I send him. I, I don't want Ellingsburg to set his feet. That's just too much cushion right there. Yeah, he's, if you give him time, he can set his feet. Right there, Bell Fountain tried to push the lineman back into his face, and he was able to get the ball out. He's a senior quarterback. I mean, uh, good decision maker. 
just outside the 45, with two ways to get the shoots. 43, so forward and just over two yards. Actually doing the best to go on this play. We do, Tchaikovsky did. Bam! Right by the mark. I think he's going to be just about half a yard short, maybe, well, maybe about a foot short. Yeah, they got the fourth, they got the fingers closed, so it's fourth down. Here comes that, I call it a wild gap, they bring in, that's where they chuck down. Quarterback side, running down. That's a ball for two safety, and they all stand in. And he usually just runs straight over. There's three extra blockers in front of him. Wow, what a play call right there. Gotta love it. They showed that before. They showed that Wildcat on a short down and distance, and uh, right there they throw out of it. Uh, Barlow, real plays from what Bell found it done early in the game. 25 20. Both teams have all three timeouts left. And the ball also goes to two. And so back to front. 25 20. With 127 to go in the football game. Granville took a timeout. What an incredible risk reward play there. I mean, because if, if he just if he drops the football, the game's over. Um, but uh, connects for the big touchdown play. Gutsy play call. This might sound weird, but it might be better than once the receiver caught the ball on the right side by they want to throw the touchdown because if they tackle it like the 10 yard line, Granville could just take it down to nothing and pick a field goal. seconds to burn up out of their timeout. Randall has two timeouts left. Well, found there's all three. The Chiefs trailing 25-20. Randall will go for two. Matt Schenkowski in the backfield. He'll actually get the gift. It's a razzle-dazzle. Barrasso wants to throw back the other way. So Belfont now, if they can get it in the end zone, they win. Yeah, he's been doing really well uh, running the football, but they're going to have to throw it here. What a wild game. What a wild second half. Oh, it's all going to start off with the kickoff, too, because you know, here's some big returns. And Kate Reed's had this return. Uh, two plays back as well. Yeah, I would think that uh, here, the kicker's going to try to hit the end zone, I would think.
Nobody can hear me. Nobody can hear me. Nobody can hear me. No, no. Our grand ball high school. 122 to go in the game. Chiefs trailing it. 25 20. Yeah, it's been a great one. the ball down the field, Bill. Um, you know, I think that play right there maybe looking for a little catch and run, but the ball was low and he had to go down to get it. 107 left on the game clock. This will be, uh, if Delphine can pull this off, this will be one of the most incredible finishes I think they've had, Bill. Chiefs, seven, 63 yards between uh, the Chiefs and a victory. Yeah. I think the key here is to try to get someone like Wilson or Neo the ball in space with, you know, like a crossing route or something where they're running with it and they can use their legs to outrun the defense. Yep, run after the catch. I could run after the catch. Second and seven. To back out to the... Which Riley Neer in the game is a slot receiver. Wilson is uh, split to the wide right. Not sure what the stoppage is for. Well, they're trying to get the, the clock still says 127. It should say 107. But the Chiefs need some magic. Second and seven. Harper Scott goes in motion. St. Clair looking, looking, looking. Throws. Caught by his receiver who's tackled immediately. Caden Reeves took a hard hit. He gets up. Tough guy. First down all the way to the 45. That was a strike by St. Clair. Gain of 18 to the Granville 45. Chiefs will not use a timeout. Game clock ticking away down to 55 seconds. So Clay ready. Out of time. Looking, looking, looking. Throws as receiver near makes the catch at the 36 inbounds. See if the Chiefs take a timeout. They do. 41 seconds to go. Well, Fountain has one timeout left. Neal was tackled at the 37. Gain of eight. 37 yards, Bill. Mm. I, I can't think of a game that's been this exciting except for maybe the playoff game uh, Des Liburtis' senior year or junior year. One of those years. Senior year against Tri Valley. Valley. Yes, Valley. against Tri Valley. Yeah. What I've seen this uh, series, for the most part, is rushing three and dropping eight. Do you think they'll die with the blitz? Yeah, I mean, I don't think so. I think they're going to play. They don't want to get beat deep. So you're, you're basically just guarding the goal line. You'll, right. you'll let both of get to the one yard line because that's that doesn't do any damage. So, yeah, I, I agree with that. Maybe tighten up if you, as you get closer, like if it's a first and goal at the five or something like that. But yeah, keep everything in front. A two point conversion uh, could be a huge point in the game. Yeah, that's true. Because we had that one for two and it was incomplete. Second and two for the Chiefs after the timeout at the Grand Goal 37. Belton trailing 25-20. Harper Scott now goes in motion. St. Clair wants to pass. Plenty of time. Throws downfield. 
And as receiver comes back for the ball, he's going to make the catch around the 16-yard line. Tough situation was behind Reams. He had to contort his body around towards the ball found bench. Would have been a heck of a catch. But now third and two. Game clock is down to 36 seconds to go in the game. Yeah, it's, uh... A lot, of, a lot of tension here, Bill, in the press box, on the field, in the stands. <laughs> Get out the blood pressure medicine. Third and two for the Chiefs at the Granville 37, trailing 25-20. St. Clair wants to pass. Plenty of time caught by Wilson. Wilson gets out of bounds. That's the good news. First down and out of bounds at the 31. Nice play call right there just to get the first down. Gain of six. Chiefs still have... One timeout left, 32 seconds to go in the game, and Belfound trails it 25-20 here on WPKO HD2 Belfountain. You know, you still got one timeout. You got the clock stoppage on the first down. I think you still got to work the middle of the field here. Got to wonder if they won't take a shot to Wilson here as well. Looks like he's got maybe man coverage by Barrasso. St. Clair wants to pass. Now steps up. Where are he going to run? 30. Throws downfield against his body, and it's incomplete. Was out of bounds by the left pylon. I think he could have picked up some yardage, but I think he was worried about the clock running out on him. St. Clair let it go right at the line of scrimmage. Game clock down to 24 seconds. Second and 10 at the Granville 31-yard line. Second and 10 at the Granville 31. Touchdown or bust for the Belfound Chiefs. Chiefs have really moved the ball this half. But then in the third quarter, they had chances to score and were turned away. Third, or rather, second and 10 at the Granville 31. St. Clair wants to pass. That's plenty of time. Looking, looking, looking. Throws towards the sidelines. Caught by Reams. He's tied with inbounds at the 26. Chiefs will have to use a timeout. They don't, though. Game clock is at 10, 11. No, they called it. They, Coach Brown got it. I think it's going to be about 16 seconds. Okay. Timeout by the Chiefs. We'll keep it right here. It will be third and five at the 26. Game clock is at, well, it says seven, but that's not correct. That's the final timeout for both now. What you cannot do and looking at the 14 seconds, the Granville fans don't like it, but that was right on that. So time for probably three plays, but what you cannot do is you cannot get sacked. You could throw a deep middle, I think, and uh, get the first down and then have time to spike it. Would you agree? Yeah, I think with, I, I actually, I don't know if you can get three plays off, though. I, I, I think you're two? looking at two, maybe. And I think you you got two chances here. You got to maybe run a 10-yard out and get out of bounds or go twice to the end zone. And those field goals that uh, Granville hit in the first half, how big are those right now? Yeah, they're big. First half, Noah Music hit a 32-yarder and a 47-yarder. Third and five. Game clock. Is at 14 seconds. They're trying to get that game clock set to the right time, but it should be 14 seconds to go in the game. Here on 107.3 the drive. Randall has rushed three and dropped in eight. And, and mathematically, the most receivers you can send out is five. You have to have five down guys, five blockers. So Randall trying to win the game with a little bit of math here. Eight to cover five. Third and five for the Chiefs at the Granville 26. 14 seconds to go in the game. Both on fields 25-20. What's coming? Chiefs throw end zone. They have a guy out there. Reeves fights for the ball. It's incomplete. Green clock is at nine seconds. Fourth down. Chiefs took a shot, and Granville actually blitzed one of the backers. Yeah, I was kind of surprised to see that, but uh, I think you're going to see the same thing, either Reeves or Wilson. Uh, that's going to be his choice. Fourth and five. They play a little bit of cat and mouse here. A little chess match with Granville. Those have two timeouts. They can see how Belfine comes out. They call a defensive timeout right here. Chiefs 
Chiefs. Fourth and five at the Granville 26. Hunter Scott is in motion. Here comes a blitz again. Pass outside, caught by Reigns. Falls down. They'll move the sticks, but the Chiefs need to hurry up and spike it. The ball's inside the 20. Game clock is at five. They're holding it to move these sticks. Chiefs have to spike it again. It's at four, three. St. Clair spikes it with two seconds to go. One play out from the 18. And the, there was a flag thrown on the far side. Thrown on the near side, or rather on the near side at the 20-yard line. Well, the Chiefs definitely spiked it with enough time to go. That's all right. What was the call down? It was a false start, so it's five-yard penalty, but, you know, at this point, that doesn't hurt you any. Game clock is at two seconds. So it will be first and, well, really first and uh, 23. <laughs> Ball will be at the 23 yard line, so that's what the Chiefs have to do. Gleason Brown talking to the far side official. Three seconds on the clock. Oh, the Granville crowd's acting like he just took something from him, but it's, uh, it's, it's the last play, whether it's two or three seconds. I got to think it's going to C.J. Wilson. He's at the bottom of the formation, the right side. The defender is about. 12 yards off. I would think it's going to Wilson on some kind of a pattern to the deep right. Well, they got this whole drive. They stayed away from uh, number four for Granville. Verasso. Verasso's their best skill player. He's covering Wilson. St. Clair drops back. Has plenty of time. Throws end zone into coverage. The receiver there. Reams will make the catch. Oh, he's, he's out of bounds. He oh, broke it down, but they say he got pushed out by the left pylon, and Granville wins it 25 20. Then a flag thrown afterwards. Now the flag won't matter. The game is over, but Granville survives. Reams went up and caught it by the left pylon. But it's so far away from us, I don't know if he came down out of bounds or when he was in the air, Randall just shoved him out of bounds. But either way, Chieftain players down on their knees in dejection, and Randall survives at 25-20. What a playoff game. I'm not sure about that. You know, yeah, I, I, don't, I wasn't close enough, but I can tell you right now that the way that the Bell Fountain people are reacting over there... Uh, and the referee will get escorted up by the referee. The referee's getting a police escort now, so I, I can tell you right now that that was a lot closer than you think, Bill. Wow. Some of the ball found players still just down in the field, physically exhausted and emotionally drained. Aiden Manns has to be helped up. Not that he's hurt, but he's just, he's, uh, he's, he's hurt emotionally. And the players will meet at midfield and shake hands. What a game. Chiefs come up just short tonight. They fall 25-20. They did respond, though. They got down 19-7, took a lead of 20-19, but they they came up just really one play short. And I'll say earlier that what I said a few minutes ago, Granville's picking game in the second quarter, huge tonight. Two field goals, 32 yard and a 47 yard, and those points are big, especially as we go down the stretch. But Granville wins it 25-20. We'll keep it right here. We'll have our Don Hensley play of the game. Both of bows out at 8-3. and three. Granville goes to 9-2. And, and they'll play Jackson next week in the next round of the Division Three Region 11 playoffs. Don, what a game tonight. Riley here really delivered in the absence of Chris Fogan. I thought both of defense actually played a pretty good game again. Couldn't get a stop when they had to. Uh, after they took the lead in the fourth quarter and a little razzle-dazzle by Granville. Little, little trick play on fourth and one with a jump pass in the Wildcat formation. Yeah, that was that's a tough one to lose, Bill. Um, great, great play call by Granville. Comes down to the final play. In or out, nobody really knows. Um, well, what we do know is the Chiefs bow out at eight and three. 
any, you know, we, we have a pretty sharp post game. We'll have your player of the game, maybe some final numbers. The Chiefs moved the ball well, especially once we had our technical breakaway. But, you know, what, yeah, if you pick just a couple, three things, what was the difference? You know, it was just a tough loss. I, you know, I don't tough loss all the way around. Um, great play call by Granville to win it. Uh, you know, I I think that um, there's really it's hard to say that there's one or two key plays. I mean, that fourth down play obviously was the was the game. Yeah, that surprised Bob. I, you know, we don't see Granville, but that play call surprised me, and I could see I would surprise the defense. Yeah, it was a good good play call. If you got that in your repertoire, it's a great time to go to it. You know, the other thing, too, Don, and we wrap it up, the Chiefs in the third quarter had great field position inside the Granville 30, I think, and they didn't score. To me, that was probably the biggest sequence in the game. Yeah, they, well, they had the ball inside the 30, I think, three times during the night and, and came away with no points on those three trips. This is one they're going to think about. I mean, this was one that got away from them a little bit. I think that Belfon, I think, had a better team. And, uh, you know, but uh, not a, better teams don't always win. And Granville did a nice job of getting back. Well, Belfont had all the momentum when, momentum when they went up 20-19, to 19, and Granville finds a way to score a touchdown. Well, they're experienced, too, and I think their experience from last year in the playoffs probably helped Granville. They went 13-1, got all the way to the state semifinals. They were the regional champs last year, and they kind of looked like it at that point in the game and the fact they didn't flinch. Yeah, I mean, you know, experience means something. How about, uh, the, how about the Don Hensley player of the game? Yeah, I think uh, I'd, I'd give it, you know, I, I didn't have a chance to do all the stats, but mm -hmm. I'm going to say that, uh, you know, Riley Mears, 162 yards on the ground, filling in for Chris Fogan, I think, was uh, was MVP of the game worthy. Yeah, Riley Mears had an outstanding game. We'll wrap it up. Thanks to Ty Avila back in studio control with Xander Kuhn. Here with Big Lou and Gary Kaufman as well on 107.3 The Drive. The final score tonight in week 11, Granville comes from behind in the fourth quarter after the Chiefs came from behind. And Granville knocks out Belfound 25-20. The Chiefs finish the year 8-3. CBC co-champs. Granville goes to 9-2. Final score one final time on the Quest Federal Credit Union High School Football Scoreboard. Granville 25, Belfound 20 for Don Hensley. I'm Bill Tipple saying so long.